you have been warned. A serious warning has been put out by Congress that there is a national security threat for which must be declassified so the American people can know. And uh, according to all the latest reports, that threat is Russian space nukes. That's right. It's as crazy as Jewish space lasers, but the fear is that Russia is going to put nukes in outer space. They haven't yet, but the American people must know. And assuming that is actually what they're warning about. Yeah, spare me, dude. I really don't care. That's such like, you know, we talk about it quite a bit on the show. Nukes are like 100 year old technology or 80 year old technology at this point. They have much more powerful weapons much more dangerous weapons. I'm more concerned about the potentials of Havana syndrome and maybe gain of function research. But OK, OK, I mean, space nukes is scary. Sure. Many people think this is a ploy because the House is refusing to take up a vote on the Ukraine war funding bill so they can put out this ridiculous narrative that Russia, if they're not stopped, they're going to put nukes in outer space and that everyone's going to get scared. Yeah, very few people are buying it. But that seems to be the big story. Now, there is really big news from earlier in the day. There's not as much to elaborate on, but it is a massive story, a mass shooting at the Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl parade. Shocking story. So we will we will get into exactly what happened there and the updates that are going on with uh, with what happened. There are many children who are injured. Uh, I believe there's one death and that is a, a rather uh, tragic story. So we'll definitely get into that. And then we have uh, an exclusive from SCNR.com. An individual who was filming a, a, a drag show with minors was attacked by the individuals it, it, on video. It appears the, the individuals are attacking him. And the cops actually arrested the guy doing the filming who was protesting. So we'll talk about that. Before we get started, my friends, head over to eyesofadvice.com. It's the new song coming out by Tim Cast. It's, uh, it's a great song. At least that's what I'm told. Everyone agrees. And when you go to eyesofadvice.com on your Apple device, it will prompt you to iTunes where you can pre-order right now. If you're just on your desktop and you don't have iTunes installed, It'll just send you to Apple Music where you can get a preview of it, but not much else. But right now you can pre-order the song, which will be released February 23rd, 2024. It is the most intensive music video we have produced yet. It took months to make. I believe it was like every 10 seconds of video took 48 hours of rendering because of the heavy CGI. I mean, take a look at that graphic that we got from the video. It's, it's, it's really, it's a creepy, it's a fun song. I'm really excited for it. So uh, eyesofadvice.com, but also you can pick up your, your favorite cast brew coffee if you want to support the show. We're really excited because we've sold out of our event at the new location, which is uh, the second and third floor of our first cast brew location. So again, support cast brew at castbrew.com, buy our coffee, the coffee uh, 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 Appalachian Nights seems to be everybody's favorite. And then the building where we're putting the coffee shop, we're hosting on March 5th, an event sponsored by Good Ranchers. So uh, shout out to Good Ranchers. We're big fans. We've got uh, more to say about uh, them as we get closer to the, the event, but they made it all possible. So we're, we're super excited. And uh, we sold out instantly. The moment we announced we were doing a members only show, 50 tickets, they all sold out. So really excited. But the good news is we're planning on doing potentially once a month an event in Martinsburg, West Virginia at this location. So the club on the second floor and the live events on the third floor. So it's going to be really exciting. But go to TimGuest.com, click join us, become a member to support the show directly. And as a member, you will get access to members only live shows in Martinsburg, West Virginia when we have them. You'll also get access to the members only Discord server where you can hang out with like minded individuals. There's a pre-show, there's an after show, they've got shows on the weekends, so it's a vibrant community. And uh, as a member, you can submit questions and actually call into our uncensored show Monday through Thursday at 10 p.m. and talk to us and our guests. So definitely get on it. Smash the like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show right now everywhere you can if you really do like what we do and you want to help. Joining us tonight to talk about this and everything else uh, everything else is Ada Yuk. Hi, team. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, who are you? What do you do? Okay, so I'm Ada Yuk and I'm from Spain, as you can notice with my accent. And basically, I married Joey Manarino, so that made me a conservative influencer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but my real passion is holistic beauty and wellness. Right on. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, thanks for joining us. It should be fun. Of course. Thank you and, so uh, much. We got Phil hanging out. Hello, everybody. My name is Phil Labonte. I'm the uh, lead singer of the heavy metal band All That Remains, uh, anti-communist and counter-revolutionary. We're here with Ian. Hi, Phil. Thanks for thanks for talking me in like that. You know, always good you. to see you. Good to see you, Ada. Ian Crossland, you know me. You love me. Thanks for coming, guys. See you soon. And oh, uh, yeah. I am Surge.com. Uh, what kind of Surge.com? <laughs> right, yeah. You get, you get where I'm going with this. Uh, yeah, happy corporate fertility holiday to all of you guys as well. Uh, just, as like, 
completely nonsensical. I'm going to point it out anyway. There's that. Do you ever hear that song "Animal" by Mike Snow? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know that one where he says, "I yep. change shape just to hide in this place." I always thought it was better if, if he said "Heart shaped shades" because I just Ugh. like that idea better. <laughs> cool line. It it's yeah. Heart shaped sh- heart shaped shades to hide in this place sounded so much cooler to me. By the way, Mike Snow. If you don't know Mike Snow, check him out. Great, Great music. band. Yeah. Really good. One All right. Yeah. Well, let's talk yeah. about news. So uh, here's the story from the Daily Mail. I hope you're in for a laugh riot. Serious national security threat is, quote, Russia wanting to put a nuclear weapon in space. Biden urged to declassify all materials after ominous warning from top Republican Mike Turner. OK, here it is. U.S. House Intelligence Committee. Today, the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence has made available to all members of Congress information concerning a serious national security threat. Quote. I am requesting that President Biden declassify all information relating to this threat so that Congress, the administration, and our allies can openly discuss the actions necessary to respond to this threat. Of course, Russian space nukes. And, uh, you know, I got to be honest. Mike Cernovich summed it up better than anyone else could. Imagine believing this. Okay. So you're telling me that a day after the Senate passes $60 billion in funding for Ukraine, 14.7 or 15, whatever, for Israel, plus funding for Taiwan. And the House says, no, you get this report that, well, actually, Russia is going to put a nuclear weapon in outer space. So, yeah, we get it. They're trying to create fear, panic and pressure so that they can force the House to vote so that your money goes to war. This is like Saddam Hussein with his chemical weapons in Iraq. I remember that very well. He's got chemical weapons and then uh, weapons of mass destruction, weapons of mass destruction. And then they went and there were no weapons of mass destruction. There were no new. I mean, they were like, they they might have got rid of them. They might have rushed them out the door before the inspectors got there. There was the weapons that we gave them. (laughs) But there there is an argument about what does it mean to have a weapon of mass destruction? Because some people have talked about chemical weapons or biological weapons. But, but, you know, the, the fear was that they'd have nuclear weapons or something. Yeah. You know, look, my my friends. In the deep state, um, it's not the Cold War anymore. I I was born at the end of the Cold War, and I was but a wee child when the Cold War ended. Uh, how old were you? You're 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 like what, like ten years old than me, Phil? Yep. So you were like, so how old were you when the cold when the when the wall came down and, and the Soviet Union collapsed? 14, well, 89, 14. Yeah. So like you actually like that I that happened, it. and for me, I was like, nah. I, I had no idea what was going on. I think I was playing with Duplos or something. I, I remember it. It was crazy to think because I was, and the funny thing is I was familiar with it. I feel like I was familiar with it because I was a big fan of uh, that, that movie Gotcha where they were in Eastern West Berlin and or, and playing uh, paintball. That was like my <laughs> first introduction to Western, uh, East Germany, West Germany. But I remember it coming down and, and you know, it was a big deal. Like, and I still feel like people have forgotten how big of a deal it was. Yeah. You know, it felt like war was over. Finally, there was a lot of that. And that you, you felt that way in the rest of, uh, like the rest of the country too. like the military kind of changed the direction that, that they were going. And that's one of the things that I heard, uh, I think it was Ben Shapiro talking about it, talking about how in the nineties, after the Soviet union fell and after the fall of the, the Berlin wall and stuff and, and kind of communism people kind of were like oh communism is actually falling apart globally and it's going to be a new age of the united states is the only superpower and it's going to be a new world of of you know liberalism and stuff and and but when when, when you guys were kids was there a fear of a nuclear bomb dropping on your city Not for me, me yeah oh there was because i i mean i lived i i lived right down the street from uh an air force base that had westover air force base in in Chicopee, massachusetts has the longest runway in the northeast wow. it's it's one of the alternate locations to land the space shuttle and because of the length of the runway b52 bombers can land and and take off and and stuff from there so that's a nuclear target. Like they're going to, if, if during the cold war, it was like, we're going to shoot that because they got to get rid of the. the so, target, I, so I, I hear these stories from, uh, you know, people older than me about the drills, duck and cover, yep. Soviet nuclear bomb, nuclear war. But I grew up at, after, I mean, I'm, I'm a small child when, uh, the Soviet Union collapses and the wall comes down and all that. And it was like, I'm, I'm, I, I vaguely remember like sitting in my basement maybe or something. I never did duck and cover. No, but I mean, like there was a, there was a fear of of war, yeah, and there was active proxy war going on. But I'm saying, like for my life, there was no fear of nuclear bombs dropping on anybody. Yeah, makes and sense. so I don't look. You look. I'm I'm gonna be 38 in, in like three weeks. I 
this idea of nuclear bombs in the sky does not resonate with me in any way. When uh, I was I was reading about the space race because you know you, someone like Alex Stein here says the moon landing didn't happen, and then I'm <laughs> you know I'm going to read about the history of of you know what's going on and why the U.S. wanted to compete, and there was a fear that with the launch of Sputnik, Russia would put weapons in outer space, and so I look at this and I'm like, it's been 60 years, dude. You are not. I, I am not phased by the, by this idea because I already assume they have them in outer space. I, it's just not... I, well, they have... I mean, intercontinental ballistic missiles go into outer space to be able to get around the world. Like, that's that was the reason for the space race. The, the military reason for the space race was to be able to put rockets into orbit and get them to come down where you want them to so you can put a missile into orbit uh -huh. and get the warhead to come down where you wanted it to. So it was a dual purpose. It was for space exploration and, and et cetera, but, it re but also it was for learning how to use intercontinental, intercontinental ballistic missiles because that's all rockets are. I was just thinking that one of the reasons why I was never afraid in the 80s of, of nuclear wars because of Reagan. Like, and I didn't know much about politics. Politics. I was like seven or eight, but he was so friendly. He he seemed on TV so nice, and he would joke, and he seemed confident, and like it just I felt safe because the president was cool. Yeah. And, well, well, under I, Biden, you have to be scared. Like he's a puppet. That's I what it feels like. I suppose it's a fair point. I'm not scared of Russia. I'm scared of ineptitude from Joe Biden. I know. Even in <laughs> Spain, we laugh at him. Like you look at the U.S. and it's a joke right now. So what, how, how was, long? Oh, how long have you been in the U.S. for one year? One year. So yeah, what's it exactly. what's it like in Spain? What's the perspective perception of uh, of the Biden administration and, and the United States? Even my grandma laughs at him, and she has no <laughs> idea about politics. Like you look at the U.S., what's supposed to be like the strongest and most amazing country on earth, and you have a guy that cannot even speak English. I speak better English than Joe Biden, <laughs> and I just have him here for That's one true. year. So so people laugh at the U.S. What about Trump and though? They respect him. They can think he's an asshole because of the media, but they respect him. <laughs> they, it's like, I, okay, it's a strong country with under Trump. I feel like we're living under a cult, right? I mean, I call the left a cult a lot. But this narrative that they constantly put out, it's like, it's it's a parallel reality. You know, it was um, uh, Max Kaiser and Stacey Herbert were talking about it, that uh, they were overseas in the first Trump election in 2016. Mm -hmm. And so they were like, oh, there's no way Trump's going to win. Everything we've seen in the media says he's going to lose. And then when they came back to the US and saw the signs everywhere, they were like, Trump's going to win. Like the reality on the ground with people is so dramatically different from what the media has been showing everybody. That's so the problem. In the US, they say Trump has made us a laughing stock around the world. I've not really experienced that. I, I, I'm not saying it's true. I'm just saying in my in my experience, having traveled quite a bit during this time, I I didn't experience this laughing stock. I would say that I experienced one of two things. Laughter, uh well, 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 after in two forms, either at the, ex uh, at the expense of Trump a little bit, but not in this idea that everyone was laughing. I would say it was actually a lot of it was unease and concern mm -hmm. of like, what's going on? What's happening to the United States? Yeah. But there were a lot of people that I had met. And this one's extremely obvious. The other the other the other uh, experience I had, especially all over Europe, is we love Trump. We need Trump here. So many people, the ones that do so a little bit more of research rather than just looking at watching on TV, they love Trump and they. They are jealous of the U.S. of when they had Trump and hopefully they will have Trump again. But most of the people that only watch the news on TV, they think that he's a bad person, that he does all these rude jokes. But they respect him, though, because he looks strong. Well, yeah, he looks crazy. That, 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 that's Trump's, those are Trump's words <laughs> when he said that Putin and, and, and she were scared that he would nuke them. And, he, you know, he was like... I, I love that you, you, you've heard that voicemail yeah. where he's like, I told them that if they if, if, if I told Putin that if he invaded Ukraine, I would nuke Moscow. And if, <laughs> if she invaded Taiwan, I would nuke uh, uh, Beijing. And he's like, I don't know if they believed me, maybe five percent, but it was enough. And it's like, yikes, it's man. <laughs> but it's I, true. I was asked. I debated Destiny last weekend. Uh -huh. And um, at the during the debate, near the end of the debate, the moderator Wick asked me, I think it was Wick asked me, what's the most fact? Because I was set, claimed that we're in a fascism system right now. We have a system of fascism. And it's not all fascism or none. It's like a gradient scale, one to 100. And we're somewhere on that scale that's more than I'm comfortable with. He was like, what's the most fascist institution in the US? I said social media. But now after I thought about it, I think it's like this this corporate media, this mainstream thing. Yeah, because it's I, the I, images I, they put out are like blatantly misaligned with reality in so many ways. I would love to. I think I think I will qualify my the, the following statement with 
I would love to get a World War II historian on the Culture War show to discuss all of this, uh, accepting that what I'm about to say is, pro is, is lacking. I read, uh, I think, two and a half academic papers on what Nazism was, what fascism was. And so typically when people refer to fascism, they're, they're, they're saying authoritarian. But fascism actually had specific tenets, and it was this like traditionalist, collectivist, authoritarian. I would say that the, the, the economy we have right now under woke, like I would say woke and Nazism are the same economic system, not ideological necessarily, but, but similar. And that is because when, you know, this, this was a few years ago, I started reading uh, uh, academic papers on this stuff because, like, like I said, two and a half, not very extensive. Uh, I was reading it because I kept hearing people say, like, the Nazis were socialists. They were socialists. And then the, the socialists would be like, they were not socialists. They were far right. And I'm like, OK, well, typically far right economics refers to like laissez faire capitalism. You can do what you want with limited regulation. And I don't think or none. And uh, I certainly don't think the Nazis were of no regulation. And so I actually started reading about the economic standards and they had a they had a, a, what's called a mixed economy, which is a, a portion of it is state controlled and a portion of it is private controlled. But the system, the economic Nazi system was basically predicated upon social pressure and fear of extreme yeah. uh, detriment should you defy social yeah. order. And everything was for the state too. like as right. much as you were, they understood or they believed that it was better to have specialization in the economy. So they let they let, you know, private industry exist. But you had to line up with what the state wanted. If you look at the the economic system in Nazi Germany and the economic system in China right now, it's a, they're actually similar because yep. China exactly. has people in the office of like, you know, QI or whatever. There's like a CCP office there or like a desk there and the same kind of thing. That's that's part of the reason why we had such a, a massive problem with the FBI guy being the head lawyer at Twitter before, because it was like FBI had a desk at Twitter. And, and this is the, the the really interesting thing, the difference between the communists and the, and the Nazis. The communists are like centralized command economy. Our guy will go in and tell you what to do. And what happens then is you have an ineffective, slow moving system, which is struggling to produce. The Nazis were like, yeah, yeah, do your thing. But if we find out you're not doing things that support us, you will regret it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it was it, it's basically like cancel culture. If you and this is what that's why when you said our, like, we're in a fascist system, I'm like, that was like Italy's system. And there's an overlap for sure. But I think the woke and how they run economics is very much like the Nazis in that if you have a company and you do not support the DEI stuff, they will pull loans from you. Your, your, so your, your, your ESG score goes down and now all of a sudden you're not getting financing. This is the, it's a free market. You can do whatever you want, but if you defy us, yep. yeah, very similar to what the Nazis were doing. One of these things about the, the Nazi economy, I was just learning uh, a few weeks ago, a month ago was that they were taking out, I think it was loans. They were getting huge amounts of money in and they were building, they would be like, we're building cars for our people, but they were building tanks. They were lying. They were obfuscating this military buildup for like five years or something. And they were saying, we're revitalizing, and they were revitalizing their economy. I put that in quotes because people had jobs. People didn't even know what they were building. They would just go in, they'd build tubes. They didn't know they were building tank parts. And um, and the, the Nazis had no way to pay any of this money back. They were, were not prepared to. They were prepared to conquer their neighbors yep. and then extract yeah. the wealth. Yeah. There's, so, a, there's arguments that, that say that if the Treaty of Versailles wasn't so harsh on impunity. Germany, and so punitive on Germany that you wouldn't have ended up with World War II. That's part of yeah. the reason why people say that that's one of the things that people attribute a terrible thing to to uh, Wilson. I think it's probably not really Wilson's fault. He was supportive, but he wasn't like instrumental. And I think people are just like, one more reason to hate Wilson. Why not? But um, the treaty was rough on Germany. Let's uh, let's instead of talking about World War II history, we'll go back to the news. This happened earlier today. We have breaking news here. Uh, there's not too much to elaborate on, but we'll give you the basic details and we'll talk a little bit a little bit about it. ABC News. Bystanders tackled suspected Kansas City gunmen after shooting that left one dead and 21 injured, according to a witness. There's actually video. I don't know if you guys have seen the video, uh, but let me slow down here. Earlier today, Kansas City was celebrating their Super Bowl victory with their parade, large gathering of fans. Uh, very family fa family friendly, as I, as I understand it, When uh, except for when uh, three suspects uh, uh, allegedly opened fire. Striking 22, one person killed. Now, I, I should, I, I, I got to clarify that statement. Striking several people, someone died. It has been clarified that the injuries may be the result of panic. Not all the people were shot, but uh, it's a, it's, it's a sad story. And um, man, it, it was, it was worrying to see the breaking news. But let's Thanks. try and get some of the details here. Uh, you can see in one video, I want to, I want to highlight uh, uh, basically what's going on with the, with the. I pulled up this story because I want to highlight uh, the suspects.
Kansas City Mayor Quentin Lucas said there were 600 Kansas City, Missouri Police Department officers, 250 officers from outside agencies present at the scene. The mayor spoke to the Kansas City Chiefs who clarified their prayers are with everyone at the parade today. About 1 million parade goers were expected at the celebration today. So this is this is crazy. Uh, police spokesperson or uh, who is this? Uh, uh, Graves. I was watching this all live, so I don't know the full name of the, uh, I believe, uh, Kansas City Ch uh, Police Chief Stacey Graves said that she was angry, and the initial reports suggest that this was three guys who, uh, uh, or the, su the suspects, had some kind of beef with each other. Oh. I will I will tell you this. You know what I find very strange? Can I just point out? It's very strange. Uh, I don't see anybody posting photos of the uh, suspects who've been arrested. Have you guys? I haven't seen I, anything. I did not see uh, here's an article from ABC News about the suspect, uh, about a gunman being tackled, and there's no 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 picture or video of anybody being tackled. That's because it was a gunfight. Like, dudes, it was probably like gang beef or something like that. And a lot of people got caught in the crossfire. And thank God, like, more people didn't die. Thank God there was, well, like, hopefully more people don't end up dead. But if it was actually an attack on the people there, the death toll would have been higher. But the question is, why are they writing stories about the suspects, but not showing the suspects? Oh, I mean, There's the obvious reasons. assumption is because it's their race and they don't want to inflame racial tensions. Yes. Well, and this is and that. this is the narrative that's being inflamed right now. And it's unfortunate because I don't I, it's 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 unfortunate that's the case. But Ian Miles Chong says these are the three alleged gunmen in cuffs at Kansas at the Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl yeah. uh, parade mass shooting. How quickly are they going to bury this? They're, they're, and we we do see this video. I don't believe shows th it does show three individuals, three young black men who are being arrested to clarify. We do not know that these men are the shooters. They, I, my understanding is they arrested a lot of people. Oh, uh, it was being reported that they're uh, um, the uh, what, what do you call it? The, the the range at which they were arresting people was extremely wide. They were basically like, detain now, whoever you might suspect, search them. If they're if they're not the person, we release them. But the narrative, the, the concern right now is, and I, and, I, and I'm I'm going to say this outright, ABC News. I mean, serious question, and I think people are gonna are gonna immediately jump to the racial component of it. ABC News runs a story saying the suspect has been has been tackled by bystanders. And they don't show the video of it and they don't show photos of it. And so when you get people all over Twitter now saying like, hey, uh, how what's going on with this? It fits the stereotype that the media will will not show or will will not talk about mass shootings or tragedies when the shooter is, you know, either not white or is LGBTQ. Like we just had the, the, the church shooting in Texas and the story is falling off the, the corporate press so quickly yeah. when it turned out that it was a trans identifying female who was abusing her kid. So I'm not saying it's absolute, but I am saying when you get people going online and complaining that when there is a mass shooting that is typically of an identity the left is trying to utilize for political gain, mm -hmm. those stories die off. And then something like this happens. I can't say I'm surprised. And uh, not only is it there's problem you're I don't have any kind of like argument about the the comments about racial stuff, but also the fact that if it's if it was a gang related one, it's not a rifle. That means it's a handgun. That means it's not useful to. Oh, the I think gun one of them had a rifle. Stuff. Oh, really? Okay. I mean, let me let me pull up more details. I think I was reading that there was at least one rifle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and I I stand corrected if that be the case. Um, but gang shootings typically typically are not useful to the to the to the narrative that right. they're they're looking yeah. to uh, right. push. So they report those as mass shooting events yep. when in reality it's not really the case or it's the not. reality of the case on the ground. Because what uh, they still want you to think there's hundreds and hundreds of school shootings right. per year. That's yep. the intent. That's when they say mass shooting, they want you to, th the imagery that comes up in your head is someone at a school, someone at a workplace with a rifle slaughtering people. Yeah. What really ends up happening with m the vast majority of the mass shootings, it's gang shootings. Anytime two or more people get hit, get shot, then it's a gang shooting or I mean, then it's a mass shooting. Exactly. And that means if, if, you know, dudes are fighting over turf and they start lighting each other up and one dude gets hit and the guy behind him gets hit and the guy behind that gets hit with this, you know, same couple of rounds or whatever. That is considered a mass shooting. And again, it conjures up the idea of a mass shooter in a school slaughtering people with a long gun when really what it is is the same kind of street crime that people are familiar with and have been familiar with basically since, you know, the so, so, so just to clarify, I, I, I had seen an article that had made uh, that I believe referenced or, or a post on it said 
an, a long gun of some sort. I could be wrong. I, I, I did a quick search for a couple articles. I'm not seeing anything about the weapons they used. You could clarify and call these like school shootings mass executions because the intention to go in and slaughter a bunch of people is a, is execute of whereas a gang shootout, a bunch of people get shot. It wasn't I, really your goal wasn't to execute a bunch of people. It was no, to no, shoot no. and get your way. I disagree because execution implies some kind of like just cause. Uh, I'm against, I'm against death penalty, but typically, what does it mean does it mean that the the victim is helpless? Is that the execution? Is that what makes it an execution? Uh, I actually, someone right now is I just tweeted at me, and they have a link. What looks like a person picking up an AR-15. Right. I. I. Okay. Yeah. So I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure I read that there was a, 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 a there was a rifle of some sort. I think so. It looks like there's someone picking up. It's it's not super. It, 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 that's that's and 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 this says to me I don't yeah. You know, what What I was watching Fox and they were just like, this may be interpersonal. If there's a rifle there, I'm not so convinced. This sounds like something else. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it could be gang related. So there's industry yeah. behind it. I'm not I'm, I'm saying like, I don't think it's like some guy was cheating on some guy, you know, like some girl or something like that. Yeah. In the middle of a parade. Yeah. They wanted to kill people. If you if you watch it, so like every once in a while I'll go and, and scroll through like videos of dudes like in, in the city with guns and stuff. And you see dudes a lot of times they'll they'll be showing like Glocks with the, the switch for a fully automatic Glock mm -hmm. with, yeah. and stuff. But also you do tend to see a lot of pistol uh AR fifteens with, yeah. with just the uh the buffer tube. So it's it's reasonable to say it's reasonable. But that to that say looks that like it's a it's a yeah. it's a stand, like an actual standard long yeah. gun. Yeah. Yeah, people people a lot of people don't know this and I'm not gonna pretend to be a gun expert, but uh, there there are pistols that look like rifles, yeah, and they're yeah. classified legally as pistols. And I don't like the path of the type of weapon you have on you indicates your intent. Um, so I don't want to make it sound like just because there was a rifle means that he was going there to kill a bunch of people. Like he might have just been a gang banger that had a rifle. Well, I mean, the thing if you if you're gonna get into a gunfight, you want to have a long gun. Well, just depends saying. on. I, honestly, it depends on where you are. Yeah, I tell you what, the professionals that enter houses, they carry our AR-15s, 10 and a half inch AR-15s. Those are the guys that go in there and get in gunfights professionally. They carry ARs. I'm going to carry an AR. No, no, no. I, I don't disagree. But, you know, we're not talking like it, you don't want a very long barrel no, indoors. No. True. Agree. You know, that, yeah. that's why it was funny when like Biden was saying get a shotgun and it's like, like look, I got a 12 gauge Remington and it's massive and I don't I, I couldn't. Like yeah. that thing's not very going to be very effective indoors. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a, a close quarters uh, combat guy. I don't know. But pretty much you probably don't want one of those. It's it's crazy how they restrict so many guns that are like, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it super simple. The idea that suppressors are restricted. Look, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. I know that if someone breaks into my house and tries to kill me, I'm going to fire that gun. I will be deaf. <laughs> like it's so loud and you're indoors and the echo, you're not going but you can't get a suppressor. It's just absolutely wild how difficult they make it to get a suppressor, which is basically increasing the safety. Mm -hmm. yeah. In oh. in in Europe, you have there are places where you have to have right. suppressors, right? Where it's a, where it's a safety issue because of sound levels. Yeah. Are, are guns legal? What's the legality in Spain? I wish, I wish. No, we we, we are not allowed to have guns. I guess if you're a hunter and you have some type of permission, you can, but you cannot defend yourself. So you guys are so lucky to have the Second Amendment. Do Oh, do people have, like, do people get no. guns anyway and then go and make Just shootings? Just criminals, no, no, no. <laughs> but, yeah. but do criminals right. do that? They, there still yeah. is that kind of crime? But then we cannot defend ourselves. The only person who have guns and are not, like, hunters are criminals. What about the cops? And cops, but I don't know at their house. I don't think they're allowed to have them at their house. I don't know. I have to check that. But here's the important thing. Um, we, you say they're criminals. Yeah. But even if they're not actively robbing or stealing, they are quite literally a criminal because guns are illegal. Yeah. And they are carrying a gun, which is completely right. illegal. Does it happen where there's like gun violence and people are just like enraged that they're not legally permitted to carry weapons to defend themselves? So the problem in Spain is that almost everyone is a socialist and they believe in <laughs> peace and freedom and oh, no guns. But then when they get shot, they just cry, but they don't say I want a gun. Very, a very few people. There's only one party, Box, Box Party, that believes in guns and the right to defend ourselves. Did you used to have the right to defend yourself with guns and then they were taken away? I don't think so. We never did. Well, no. I mean, probably a really, really, really long time ago. Probably, yeah. Well, yeah. Hundreds yeah, and right. hundreds of years ago when guns were just like muscle-loaded muskets or yeah. whatever. But for example, right now I'm in my house and someone mm -hmm. breaks in and I heard these people 
this person, not even with a gun, with like a knife or something, I am the criminal for defending my house and my property. I would go to jail, not this person. Actually, there's a case in Mallorca, one island in Spain, that a 90-year-old man defended himself. He had a gun. Maybe he was a hunter. And he was sent, um, sentenced to go to jail. But at the end, he didn't end up going. But the 90-year-old man was supposed to go to jail for defending himself. Yeah. Inside his but then they overturned it? Yeah, because he was so old or something. What about like the guy that invaded the house? What happened to him? Probably nothing. Yeah. <laughs> we we praise criminals in Spain. Yeah. Well, let's let uh, since we're on the subject of guns, we do have a lot of other big political news. But since we're talking about guns, let's pull up this video, which is taking the internet by storm oh, with so tens good. of millions of views going viral. This might be my new favorite. Ford Fisher. New body camera footage shows Oka, uh, Okaloosa County, Florida, Deputy Jesse Hernandez declaring shots fired and I'm hit and shooting at the handcuffed, unarmed suspect inside his, of his police car. He had not been shot. Rather, it was determined that he heard an acorn drop onto the car. <laughs> Dude, when I watched this video earlier today, I was laughing for like 20 minutes. <laughs> it is like Reno 911. And, I'm, and, and I got to, look, I'm only laughing because nobody got hurt. Yeah. But it is two cops screaming and unloading their guns into their own vehicle because the guy heard an acorn. I, I will look. So you're gonna hear gunshots, but you know, for our, our friends who may be uh, who may be concerned, and for the censors over there at YouTube, nobody got hurt. Everything's fine. Let's all calm down and watch the video and uh, have a laugh. Thankfully, nobody got hurt. If these are trained professionals, watch. Hard. Shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired! I love it. <laughs> Just so you know, he's Wait. breaking fire. rules, guys. Fire. He's breaking firearm safety rules. <laughs> know your target and what's around it. He's like, I'm hit! <laughs> he has no idea what he's shooting at. I would be so embarrassed. I, I love that he's like crawling, screaming dude. that he's been shot and he hasn't been Checking shot. his own movie. You know what I think happened? He rolled on like a stone. And yes, <laughs> yes, yep. Yeah. I think when he did those two combat rolls for no reason, gravel. He, he oh. rolled over a rock, which pushed into his back, and he's like, "I got me in the back." Oh god, dude, just him. My, when I first, I'm like, when I first watch this, I'm kind of like, don't you need to assess the situation and try and figure out if there was a gunshot, where it's coming from? And the fact that there was no gunshot, why are you unloading your your magazine into your own vehicle? Like if there was a shot, it could have come from somewhere else, perhaps. Unreal. The the the, the the so there's more, but the look he's look wait wait till he says I'm good. I hope that he's not the the adrenaline is pumping right now, right? Dude. No, wait wait, I guess I wasn't shot. Right. How embarrassing. I, I'm, I'm good. I feel weird, but I'm good. I feel <laughs> weird. <laughs> man. Uh, I feel so weird. There, so oh, check man. us out. Check us out. Here's the video from the perspective of uh, Sergeant Beth Roberts. Okay. I'm going to rag on her a little bit less because there is a certain reasonableness to your partner screams, shots fired, I'm hit. And you say where, and they point, and you assume that they are correct. But it is still equally insane. Do you know your tag number off the top of your head? Okay, no. it's okay. What? What? Oh, oh. Wait, right there? <laughs> you the they're shooting at each other! They're just shooting the same yeah. direction, dude. <laughs> that, it's, can I just, can you just like, okay, look, there's the guy, here's her gun, she's aiming, he's, wow. she could hit him! I don't know how long these officers have been on, you know, on the job or whatever, but this is not a well, these are not well-trained officers. No. Like you don't Dude. start shooting without knowing what you're shooting at. You, you we used, we've all, we've all seen Reno 911, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. You may, you maybe not have, you know, cause you've only been in the US for, for a year, but it was a show where it was like, I mean, the guy from Reno 911 just did a Super Bowl commercial. Yeah, literally. It's basically <laughs> this like laughably bad police department. And the idea of a guy hearing an acorn rolling on the ground twice, screaming, shots fired, I'm hit, and then just unloading every bullet he has into his own car 
is like a sketch out of Reno 911. I've been doing tactical training in Florida with Luke mm-hmm. Rutkowski. And one of the things that they have been teaching me and all of us is that cops aren't getting enough uh, real life gunfighting training. They get no. a lot of range training. Well, I don't even know if they get a lot, but they get like range training to shooting. But you're supposed to like not flip out. Literally, he flipped out Dude. when he heard a noise. That's the that, crazy thing for me. They heard a noise. They say you say shots fired into your radio to let their to let your dispatch know that shots are fired. I, you don't just yell I shots fired. I got a conspiracy reason. theory. Yeah. What if this cop was trying to kill the suspect? Whoa, dude. And oh. and so so think about it. An nice. acorn hitting a car. There is no look. There's like a a, a report. Uh, Ford Fisher uh, posted as well, where they're talking to him like perhaps it was the sound of this acorn hitting the car that you <laughs> thought was a gunshot, and he's like, I don't think so. Maybe. I don't believe, I don't believe it. I don't believe that is the simple solution that a cop heard an acorn hit his roof and assumed someone fired a gun from inside the car because he has one. He's used it. He's, yeah. he's done some training with it. He knows what they sound like. And there's no way. I'm wondering if he just screamed that because think about this. You, this cop, let's hypothetically say cop A wants to murder a suspect, but he doesn't want to go to prison. Here's a simple solution. You scream shots fired, I'm hit. Your partner then unloads into the suspect. Oh, and you let the partner and then, kill the person. But the partner is going to be like, I heard him scream shots fired and I'm hit. Mm-hmm. Then he says, I heard a gunshot. I yeah. didn't shoot anybody. So what happens? The ruling here was that the cop who screamed I'm hit was not, re- was not reasonable uh, in his use of deadly force. He was not criminally charged. No wrongdoing. He ends up resigning. His partner... It was deemed was reasonable when she nearly murdered a guy sitting in his car. Imagine that scenario. A cop wanting to kill someone screams, shots fired, shots fired. The partner kills the suspect. And then when it comes down to the internal investigation of what happened, he says, I heard a shot. I didn't shoot him, though. I didn't do anything. Your partner goes, he said shots fired and I'm hit. So I defended him. And they're going to say, OK, good, so clear, smart. good to go. It's like The Departed, that movie. I just I don't think a cop would go through a lifetime of training and, and becoming a cop just to find lifetime. one random guy. Who said it's not a lifetime but, but, of training? But, who, but no, no, well, no, 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 whatever. But, five. But whoa, 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 whoa. That, that was a, a the major assumption. I never said anything like that. What, like what? That a cop decided to go through a lifetime of training to become a cop to kill somebody. That's a grand leap from what I'm saying. Well, that he would throw his entire career away, even in resignation, just to kill. Well, he literally a did. Guy that he he's literally arresting. he literally threw his career away. Yeah. yeah, this in guy fact, did. Maybe someone came to him. I'll tell you what, you know, it makes more sense. This guy dropped his career on the ground. And why would he do that? Because he's an idiot. Or someone offered him money or to kill someone. He's somebody. on SSRIs or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Or someone said, look, this guy, you kill him. I give you $100,000. And he's like, okay. Interesting I'm not concept. saying literally that's what happened. I'm saying I don't see it as making sense that this cop did a double barrel roll. Screaming shots fired <laughs> and then unloaded into this car you, trying to kill a guy. You would get behind the car and under the bumper or something. If the guy if the if the guy you think is shooting at you is in the car locked in there, get under the car. Don't run further away. Do a <laughs> roll on the ground where you're out in the open. Like what does he think he's gonna dodge the bullet because he's su- rolling on the ground? You're supposed to I guess. This, is, this is my understanding, is you're I I don't I don't know about police Take training. Cover, man. But my, what what when when I the hostile environment stuff I've done, it was always immediately seek dead ground or cover when shots are fired. Uh, if you're going by a car, it's the engine block. I don't understand why it was that he screamed, shots fired, remained in the open yeah. and started shooting at the vehicle in the way he did. Yeah. What I kind of lean towards is he just wanted to kill the guy. Yeah. You know, the- I mean, look, look, hold on, let's do the Dave Chappelle test. Remember Dave Chappelle? Yep. What- Cop hits a guy in the street, goes, oh, crap. Sprinkle a little crack on him. Let's get out of here. <laughs> the, 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 the gag being that like the cop will try and put the fault on the victim when they make yeah. a mistake Just bring a little crack on him <laughs> yeah that was like, yeah, his whole bit yeah it's the great. cop accidentally hits a guy and he's like what do we do it's like yeah sprinkle a little bit of crack on him and then we'll get out of get here. Out of here. <laughs> is this do you guys know what happened to this cop so he far? he resigned okay yeah Smart right move but th- in what circumstance could you try to kill someone and then not get in trouble for it i guess if you're on a movie set <laughs> ha, 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 so, ha, so that's an alec baldwin joke right the issue here is the argument that the the, the cops make and the pro police make is if a cop reasonably reasonably believes he's uh, uh, at risk of serious bodily harm or death he must act to defend himself and sometimes they might get it wrong but if you penalize officers for getting it wrong they will second guess themselves and die yeah it's true that that is true officers need more training um that's a fact 
Uh, they need more, and they need more hands-on training. Most likely, what they need is they need some jujitsu and some some more gunfight training. Um, if you're going to be an enforcer, I don't think that the police should be the enfor- like enforcers the way that they are. But when you get like even like entry teams, right, like SWAT teams and stuff, those guys train a, a good amount compared to like your regular beat cops. <coughs> I do think beat cops should have guns because, you know, there are a lot of Americans with guns and there are a yeah. lot of people that want to, you know, shoot cops, et cetera, and stuff. But they need more training with those guns and they should have as many options as possible. I personally don't think that like and this isn't just about men like small men and women shouldn't be police officers. You should be trying to get the biggest dude you can. Yeah, you know that you'll learn right away if you're training that if a guy comes up to you and he's bigger and stronger than you and he grabs you or he has a knife Mm -hmm. and you you can't push him away. Yeah, you can turn and run, maybe. But if he's got a gun on him, you don't want to do that either. Or at least maybe you want to turn and then go sideways. But cops don't have that option either. Cops don't have the option of letting they're forced to go towards the threat. Yeah, they have to be able to take care of it. So, you know, there should be more training for cops. They should have more more physical training. Um and they, there should be fewer laws that they have to enforce. So this is obviously not an enforcement side. This is a pol- political social side. But there's no reason to have so many laws on the books that the police don't have any idea what is and is not legal. And so they just go ahead and go with their best guess and just take them in just in case. You know, you should have a reasonable understanding that you're reasonably free in a free country. Did the partner also resign? The girl no, who unloaded? I, I don't think so. Okay. She was commanded. She thought her partner was about to get shot and killed. So she, I think she did the right thing as hor- as weird as that is. That's scary because like, we're all laughing at this, these guys being really dumb or whatever, this guy. And I'm like, I don't know. What if he was trying to, I mean, like yeah. I was going to say, he screams, rolls on the ground. Shouldn't he have like gotten behind the tree or found cover? Yeah. The yeah. first, well, I mean, the very first thing you should be doing, if especially if you actually think that you're hit, yeah, take it, cover. You should be moving to cover if you yeah. can. The very first thing. I mean, yeah, I, I, I guess, you know, draw, but like you shouldn't be trying to like barrel roll your way out of it. Like and then unloading in, yeah, in, in, in the open with no cover, just firing randomly at this car. If the guy actually had a gun, he would be returning fire. Yeah, because yeah. I, I don't believe it. I think this guy might have had some yeah. other intentions. And there's no you would hear so. you've heard a gunshot go off nearby. You would have to yell if she heard first, like, oh, shots fired. Like you'd hear the gunshot go off. Especially being a cop. Well, n- now that we've gotten through that, uh, a bi- a, a, through a little bit of levity, let's talk about uh, Trump's binders full of women. Uh, the binder, of course, and the women are Lisa Page and Sally Yates, because the binder I'm talking about is, oh, wait, no, the binder full of women. Was that Romney? Yes. Oh, Romney that was Romney, not Trump. So uh, here's the story. Missing binder at center of new claim that CIA drummed up spy operation on Trump 2016 campaign. This is a huge explosive story. Uh, Matt Taibbi, Michael Schellenberger uh, reporting, I believe it's a Michael Schellenberger's uh, uh, outlet public, that the CIA ordered foreign assets, the Five Eyes Spy Club, to spy on 26 Trump associates, essentially to create the Russiagate hoax. This is, uh, I don't know what you do, seditious conspiracy? Yeah, I don't know what the, coup? I don't know what the law is that was broken, but I know that the federal government using the CIA to spy on someone that's running for president is effing illegal. Like, so, I don't know what the, what, the, what the exact law that's being, but I know the CIA is not supposed to operate in the United States. So here's, here's now the most interesting aspect of this. There is a binder that apparently has all the information on this that is missing. No one knows where it is. I don't know that that's true. Um, it's being speculated that the binder containing information on the CIA operation to launch the Russiagate hoax has gone missing. And the speculation beyond that is Donald Trump ordered Crossfire Hurricane declassified. This is basically the Obama administration spying on Donald Trump illegally. Uh, Kevin Kleinsmith, a lawyer, was criminally charged over fabricating evidence to get a, a, a FISA uh, uh, warrant against Carter Page. This is a fact. So the rumor now, or I should say the theory, is that Trump took the binder with the information when he left. That's why they raided his home. The reason why they're going after him is because he has documents pertaining to Crossfire Hurricane. They want back because it will prove they committed crimes. So let's start here. Trump did order Crossfire Hurricane to be classified. When he was ra- when Mar-a-Lago was raided, Many people initially speculated, I bet he's got documents pertaining to Obama's warrantless wiretapping and other spy activities. Now, this story is being dropped by Michael Schellenberger, where they say they have numerous sources confirming 
The CIA did instruct the Five Eyes Spy Club, okay, that's foreign countries to spy yeah. on the Trump administration and, and 26 associates. They call it bumping, basically create a reason to spy on him. And then they create Russiagate. And then Trump took those classified documents. And that's what's going on behind the scenes. I mean, I would I would love for that to actually be true and right. to have the evidence and to actually be able to prosecute and actually start throwing people in jail because there's like I, t I completely believe that the CIA was you know spying on Trump it's illegal there should be a recourse that the American people have it is likely that we don't which means that we've lost control of the federal government which is super awesome um, that's sarcasm so it's frustrating Man, this is what they call intrigue, court intrigue. Back in the day, it'd be like, who tried to poison the king? He he stole his lingerie from the woman and put it on the man to frame the guy that was having sex with his brother. Court so, intrigue, and now we've got this bullshit. Let's, uh, so here, here's, here's, I'll give you the first little bit of the article. It says, FBI agents raiding former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate in August 2022 may have been hunting for a 10-inch binder of declassified information detailing how former CIA director John Brennan ordered the initial spying operation into Trump's 2016 presidential campaign. So hold on a minute. It is an established fact that there was spying on Trump's 2016 presidential campaign. It's like Watergate. Now, hold on there a minute, friends. We have this from our good friends over at Wikipedia. Allegations of Barack Obama spying on Donald Trump. That's the Wikipedia article. And it reads, as part of a large baseless conspiracy theory, Donald Trump posited that Barack Obama had spied on him. No, 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 no. Hold on. Why does a Wikipedia article start that way? Because it's literally written by leftists and Antifa yes. people and all Wiki kinds of BS. 99.9% .9 of Wikipedia articles will start with. It wouldn't start with as a baseless. It would say Donald uh, 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 allegations of Barack Obama spying. Blah, blah, blah. Article link. The idea that they, they, they prefaced this as part of a large baseless conspiracy theory before they even mention anything else is very weird. Considering we know for a fact he was spied on and it was the Obama administration. This is very funny for Wikipedia to have an article that says this. It gets better. Spygate parentheses conspiracy theory. See how it starts. Spygate was a disproven conspiracy theory peddled by 45th U.S. President Donald Trump and his political base on many occasions throughout his presidential term. It primarily centered around the idea that a spy was planted by the Obama administration to conduct espionage on Trump's 2016 presidential campaign for political purposes. Blah, 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 blah. Here's my favorite thing. Sp Spygate was a disproven conspiracy theory. Huh? Why, why, why is it a was? Why, why is it past tense? Spygate is no longer a disproven it's conspiracy neuro theory? neuro-linguistic <laughs> programming. They want you to forget about it. No, 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 no. Why are they saying in the past tense that it was disproven? Is it because it is no longer disproven? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right. A it used to be disproven. Now it's totally true. Yeah. Well, but it is totally true. From the Wall Street Journal, Trump really was spied on. Durham says techies linked to Clinton campaign had access to White House and Trump Tower internet data. The amount of spying that went on from the Obama administration and Democrat allies into the Trump campaign is historic record. Kevin Kleinsmith was criminally charged over this. They, they, they got they, they He falsified evidence to get a, 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 a FISA warrant against Carter Page. They were spying on him. There you go. Reality. So I, 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 I want to believe that what's going on now with this missing binder is true. Part of me is just like, dude, they're going after Trump because they, they're trying to stop him from running. The binder stuff is wishful thinking. Maybe. I do think it's reasonable to believe that Donald Trump took with him classified documents related to the Obama administration's crossfire hurricane, which was what they were spying on him and you know, all that stuff. Uh, it's the look at this. They call it the counterintelligence investigation into Trump's 2016 campaign. Yeah, I think it's likely Trump did take documents from that and they want it back. I, that's reasonable. The, the just the you know, the the investigation during the campaign. You know, the the idea that they were that they clearly fabricated the whole steel dossier. There's not a debate about that. There's, you know, that was that's been proven. And and people still 
you know, I, we can't get Congress to actually do anything about it. We can't even get Congress people to to tell to talk about like exactly what laws are broken and, and be like, look, this is this, you know, to actually address this stuff outline. This is what happened or this is what we think happened and go down, you know, a realistic uh, way to, to start an actual investigation. I think the reality is. The Republicans and Democrats are the uniparty of the same thing. It is 80, 89% of Republicans. It is 97% of Democrats. They are the same party. Republicans pretend to be opposition as a pressure release valve so that people in this country who are tied to the corruption don't figuratively blow up. And Democrats are, are the voters are so intent on marching in lockstep. The Democrat politicians have no reason to do anything other than exactly what they want to do. So you will get a few Republicans in Congress pushing back, and then you will have those in the know and informed feeling like pressure is being re released. Like they impeached Mayorkas. Let's go. And then, of course, that's it. I mean, there's not going to be a conviction. Nothing will happen. It's symbolic, I guess. It makes us feel good, but nothing changes. Yeah. I want to stop using the term third party when talking about the Libertarians or the Green Party or any other parties, because the, that indicates that there's two parties and that there should be two. And if there's any other ones, those are going to be third because the, the two is, is normal. Two is not normal. You're supposed to you have as many parties as you want. It's better than having something called the United Party that's all of them together in one big party and they're just right that's in your face idea. about it. I was thinking that we should start the United Party and the be like, we're, we're right. a uniparty anyway. Let's just call ourselves you. But that's like... When it becomes right in your face and there's still nothing you can feel like nothing you can do about it, I think that's worse than at least, I think that's worse than when they're lying to you. I, I like, I just want to call them demoblicans. That's a great term. <laughs> it's a good word, right? <laughs> yeah. Like people like to say republicrat, but I'm like, mm, well, no. Republicans. Demoblican is better. Demoblicans. Because like demoblicans kind of sounds like goblin. And mob. And mob, you know, like demoblican. <laughs> and de demon. Yeah. yeah. Like demo. It works. Demoblican. Oh. <laughs> you got demon you got mob you got goblin Republican. you get them all in there demoblicans the word i'm telling you there we go we, well we figured it out we've solved all our conscious problems. I, I think what they're doing it's an in, it's an instance of like yo we know it's bad but if if we if we expose it all it's going to be worse so like we just got to deal with the corruption we have is what the that's my what i think is going on i really i really do not think that it's a situation of oh we think it's bad etc i think that the people that are in positions of power are fully aware of what's going on they're fully aware that they violate the constitution they're yeah. fully aware that they are breaking the law and they don't care because they have already proven to the american people that we can't do anything about it democrats don't go to jail no matter what they do if you're a democrat you don't go to jail you can do any crime in this world look at hunter biden look at look at uh, menendez right new jersey still dude had egyptian gold bars in suit pockets in his closet <laughs> and he is still in congress and democrats would not vote to get rid of him they wouldn't yeah they wouldn't vote yeah. to get rid of him but then you get republicans and they're like santos did what well we didn't prove anything yet but we yeah. think he might have ouch santos clowned the hell out of congress and he, honestly he kind of clowned the heck out of the district that he's from too <laughs> well but know. you know and and they're like oh you gotta go because what because he clowned on people they didn't even like like tim said they didn't even prove it you know mendez is caught red-handed but he's a democrat yeah. so it's fine mm -hmm. this yeah. is the world we live in it is hierarchy not hypocrisy democrats are above the law the law only applies to people that are not in the party this is the beginning of the of an american cultural revolution where one party state will, will end up a one party state we are. if they get the chance mm -hmm. you know see they figured it out a long time ago the, we, we look at these other countries like North Korea and we're like, that's not a real democracy. I love how they have their like fake candidate and then everyone just votes for Kim Jong-un or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. In the United States, come on. For the I, I made a meme 10 years ago. I, I, it was a picture of, uh, it's a guy and a woman sitting on a couch and there's a woman at the other end of the couch and he's got his arm behind the couch and the woman, he's holding hands with the other woman while like, He's got a girl leaning on his shoulder, but he's holding the other <laughs> behind the couch. And I'm like, this is what Democrats and Republicans are doing to you. Let's, uh, let's jump to the story from SCNR. How Republicans lost yesterday's New York special election to Democrat Tom Suozzi. Analysts and politicos weigh in on what went wrong and what it could mean for November's general election. The gist of it is, you know, Frank Luntz is like, this is a warning to Republicans. The final warning. If you don't shape up, you're going to lose. I'll tell you this. First. 
every Republican, I think it was what, 103? Or was it 105? I don't know. They, they, they are in, uh, so like Jeff Van Drew's on the list. Jeff Van Drew, the guy who was a Democrat and switched the Republican Party, garbage. And I would love for these people to come on this show so I can tell them to their face, they are spineless jellyfish. They are cowards. And I will do everything in my power to advocate people do not vote for them and vote for uh, someone to primary them. Let's start getting primary challenges on these guys. That's the first thing. The second thing is, guys, it really doesn't matter all that much that Santos lost. I do not believe this is indicative of anything having to do with November. I am not scared about this. I do think it's important that anybody who wants to see America first candidates win, you have to do the work now. That being said, while everyone's screaming that Republicans are stupid and it resulted in a Democrat taking the seat and Democrats are cheering saying, aha, this proves it. We're going to win in November. I'd like to show you New York's third district. The election that just happened, Tom Suozzi versus Mazi Melissa Pillip. The Democrat wins. 2022, George Santos versus Rob Zimmerman. George Santos wins. 2020, Tom Suozzi versus George Santos. Suozzi wins. 2018, Suozzi wins. 2016, Suozzi wins. 2014, it was Steve Israel, the Democrat, versus Grant Lally. The Democrat had won. The Democrat had won in 2012. The Democrat, uh, I believe, in, in uh, 2010. The Democrat in 2008, 2006, uh, was, was Peter King. And that was uh, uh, the last time, aside from Santos. Here's the important thing to understand. The reason why George Santos won, it's really, really simple. Uh, uh, the reason why he lost. But I'll start with, the only reason Santos won is because the incumbent did not. The incumbent didn't run. Suozzi was the guy in the district for three terms. And when he decided not to run for whatever reason, Rob Zimmerman versus Santos created an opening for which Santos was able to win. Once Santos is out, they put the long-standing incumbent back on the ticket. Oh, of course he's going to win. So for all these people who are saying like, haha, Republicans are going to lose. This is a big sign. No, it isn't. The incumbent came back. This guy who was popular in the district came back and said, I'll do the job again. And people were like, OK, we'll take it. It's not a Democrat Republican thing. That being said, Republicans are spineless jellyfish losers who shouldn't have voted to oust uh, Santos in the first place. So they reap what they sow. Yeah. I mean the Republican running in the position of Santos hated Trump, was registered as a Democrat, still at this day um, was right. registered as a Democrat. And you cannot hate Trump. Like, it's the leader of the Republican Party. How do you want Republicans to vote for someone that hates the leader of the Republican Party? Of course, they're this not going to vote for him. Or this is the weirdest thing to me, right? So, uh, Mazi Pillip, who was running as the Republican, she represents Nassau County's Long Island 10th District as a Republican. However, her current party is listed as Democratic. It's crazy. I don't understand. I'm like, I, I, I'm looking at this like, that's got to be a typo, right? So she's a Democrat. And she's still a Democrat. Really pro um, she's not pro-life either. She's pro-choice. She's pro-choice. So here, here's, right. So you run someone who is pro-choice, uh, wants gun control. Hates Trump. Uh, right. I, I don't know exactly what her, her quotes outside of this are on Trump or what she said. But she basically, in, in, in her wiki article, it mentions... As it relates to Donald Trump's indictments, she said Trump has to go through this process. No one's above the law. We have great candidates right now. Trump is one of them. We'll see. Right. She's also like, I'm pro-life, but I don't think I should impose my views on others. I'm like, that's called pro-choice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is called other people can choose whether or not they get an abortion. Yeah. It was a Democrat against a Democrat, basically. Right. And so exactly. And so it's Democrat versus Democrat. Why? Why would anyone choose Democrat light if they want to vote Democrat? Exactly. They're going to vote Just, for the long-standing incumbent they know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. I mean, well, the thing is, like, I, it shouldn't really be a surprise that the Republicans didn't win, considering, like, George Santos kind of made that district show its butt when, <laughs> when they voted for him. He's right. a clown, you know? But so. his voting record is amazing. He votes good. He might be yep. a clown, yep. but he votes good. I, but I, but I, I, have, I have a matters. question. Is he a clown? <clears throat> well, he, he has definitely a funny clowned past. them. Why? What did he do? Um, I don't know. He lied a lot about his past. But what did I, he lie about? I, I don't know about where he studied. And Wait, that, anybody? Oh, he said that his mom died in 9-11. I love Santos. I, I like him so much, I have to say. <laughs> he also said But this. he said a, lot, a little bit of lies. But he votes good, and that's what I care. The only thing I care about is how the people vote, because that's what's affecting me. And he's amazing voting, so. 
Yeah. Why should they take him off? And he said that he was going to just step out at the next race. Let him finish the, you know, the years that he's supposed to be there. So the the, the list of lies New York Mag has, and, and these these are leftists. They're hilarious. <laughs> no, but yeah, they're all. It's all. It's, it's, it's says he's alleged to have done this. He's alleged to have done this. Yeah. He's alleged to have done alleged. this. Yeah. 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 Yeah, there's oh, okay. there's no evidence that he did no. anything. Like there, there's no, no like he there was no trial or or yeah. hearings or anything. I never knew that until like, recently. Yeah, I, didn't real, I didn't realize that, that was the case. There was yeah. no actual. It was no substantial evidence at all, mm -hmm. which is crazy. And there was what, literally no due process. Why should yeah. we care about his private life? I don't care about his private life. He and lied we'll, about where he went to high school. He said he was Jew. -ish. Ish. That's so funny. Like he's a funny guy. I agree. I love about him. It's like to me that that falls right in line with like Trump's kind of stuff, which I know this is this makes the left hate him even more. But that reminds me of the kind of BS that Trump would, would try to lay so down, funny which I think is hilarious. But like he's getting the job done and he makes me laugh. Yeah, I just think everyone. it's not Congress's job to make people laugh. Where you know that's the, the you go to Hollywood to do right. that or you, you start a YouTube channel, but like jokesters, like we don't need to fuck around right now, man. We know serious people doing real work. But he was voting; he, his voting record was a serious voting record. Yeah, yeah. So he was voting. I would he was love to have him on the show. What's that? I'm sure if you invite him, he would come. Yeah, I thought, okay, he's a goofball. I have no interest. And then I saw him talk on a video, and I was like, actually, he seems very intelligent. I what if? Talk yes. to him. What if John Stewart ends up endorsing Trump? I wouldn't be shocked. I would laugh a lot for a I mean, while. There, there, were, there was a, a lot of leaps in my brain from this conversation that ended up with this point. But <laughs> yeah. it was it was basically like, starting with, what did, what did Santos lie about? We pull these lies up. Why should I care about, he lied about where he went to high school. Yeah. What do we want in Congress? You've got Democrats who refuse to oust Menendez when he's caught with wads of cash stuffed in, you know, and he's been indicted now like, what, twice. Mm -hmm. Democrats will not go after their own. Uh, in fact, AOC recently came out and said that she's going to be voting for Joe Biden because he's the greatest, one of the greatest presidents or like most accomplished. <laughs> oh and it's just patently insane, which brought me to Jon Stewart even is calling out uh, Joe Biden. If if AOC is like Biden is the best, period, and Jon Stewart is like, this guy's got problems. How long until they start attacking Jon Stewart, which they, they've already done? There, there are people attacking him saying we're facing an existential crisis of democracy. And this is what Jon Stewart finds funny. How long until the attacks on Jon Stewart turn into him saying, you know, I think Trump's crazy, but you're going to vote for him. You have to do it. You have to. I mean, look at Michael Rappaport. I think if they if they really try and ramrod Joe Biden into the nomination that he might vote for Trump, because I mean, what choice do you have at that point? I don't I don't love either of those guys. I don't know either of them, but that Biden, Biden's so slow. The Daily Show segment was good. He was like. These guys who are currently running have set the record yeah. for the oldest candidates in the history of this country, beating out the previous record that they set Dude, and four years ago. <laughs> Bill Clinton, president 30 years ago, is younger than Joe Biden. <laughs> Wait, what, for real? Yeah. Zuby was talking about this earlier on the Adam Sosnick yeah. podcast. It's, it's crazy. Bill Clinton, 77. Yeah. Wow. Oh you know why that's crazy? Because he looks decrepit. And Trump, who was also 77, actually looks kind of spry. Yeah. yeah. Trump, 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 Trump has a healthy figure, if I can say that. You know what I mean? I think he, he's a, he is a, a plump man. And Bill Clinton looks like decrepit. Bill's nose does look like he drinks, but I, I don't know that. Uh, Hillary Clinton is 76. Joe Biden's 81. <laughs> Dude, he's older than the president 30 years ago. The president, I mean, I mean it's just the math is out of. I'm blowing. In Spain, you don't see that. We, we are socialists and we are really bad, but we don't see elderly men running the country oh okay. well nancy pelosi who's like 83 she was like kelly completely capable of running this country <laughs> i think there's like um this bias where if, you know if you know someone really well and you see him every day you don't really notice them aging yeah that yeah. a lot of people that have known joe for 30 years don't really see it like people that are like seeing him for the first time like what it's in shocking. god's name is this dude 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 look guys you want to know the easiest way to understand the existential crisis we face is to simply watch. Let me see if I can find the uh, true and on a Shaba depression <laughs> Biden video. Uh, oh, see it. How do I, I speak I, better English? That's amazing. Because uh, I want to pull out this clip because it, it, you know, how do I find this true and on a Shaba depression thing? He cannot walk. He cannot speak. He Wait, doesn't what? know where he is. How we are supposed to believe that he's the president running the things? I just read that they're not going to do a cognitive test. He's going to take a physical, but he's no. not going to do the cognitive that. test. I saw that. Of he's, course, because yeah, he would fail right away. Yeah. 
What's your like, name? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> that. He doesn't know who he is, where he is, what time, wh what year it is. And he's speaking about dead people a lot. <laughs> Which that means that he may be closer to die. Oh, as as if they're still living? Like yeah. He talks about. Yeah, he's talking about. Is this the clip right here? Like I'll lead an effective yep. strategy to yes, mobilize yes. true and international effort to pressure. <laughs> But okay. then the you gotta get the crowd cheering. I know, that's, that, that's the point I'm trying to bring up. And Trump posted this three years ago on, on YouTube. The, the point I wanna bring up, and I don't know how to find the full video, is the crowd goes wild that yeah, he said yeah. it. And so every single time Joe Biden says something that's incomprehensible, the crowd cheers for it. Yeah. Our country is facing dire straits, my friends. When a guy can go on stage and go, you get the beta bar! And everyone's like, yeah! Like, ah, okay. <laughs> so uh, it was a funny, funny thing I was reading about, right? They do these. They did the study where they they uh, brought a person into a room and they were like, "Okay, we're going to be doing a study on you know on people. Thank you for participating. You'll get paid X amount of dollars." Here are the other people participating in the study. It's really simple. All you have to do is we're going to show you three lengths of yarn, and you simply write down you you uh, you will you will then vote on which is the longest piece of yarn. And so at first. The uh, what, what's actually happening is nine of the people are part of the study and one person is being studied. The one person being studied thinks everyone else is actually just another volunteer like they are or, or getting paid for a study. The first few times they'll say, OK, here's a three lengths of yarn. Which one is the longest? Everyone points the longest and they say, do you believe that one is the longest? They'll raise their hands like, OK, after a few times, the shills start choosing the obvious wrong one. And the person who's being studied just agrees with them. Overwhelmingly just falls in line and says, whatever they said is right. That's I, terrifying. I've been throughout my life the kind of guy who's like, no, you people are idiots. This is the <laughs> longest one. Please. I'm surrounded by idiots. And it has caused social, like I have issues with in social settings sometimes because people be like, why are you so different? Why won't you just fit in? Why won't you just say what we want you to say? But let's try this clip. Effective strategy to mobilize True and international effort to pressure. True and international effort to pressure. What's True and international effort to pressure. I, so the, the, the problem True with all these clips. international something under this, look, pressure is what I'm getting. I'm a conspiracy theory. The memes about this are intentionally made to protect Joe Biden. I, 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 I'm, I'm half kidding, but these memes have erased the actual damning video that's hard to find for us where the crowd cheers in celebration for him saying something nonsensical. You show your liberal parents what did Joe Biden just say? And they're like, I don't know. Why is everyone cheering for it? And that's like, that's a good question. Why is there a crowd cheering for it? It's hard to find the video. That's the video that needs to be viral, not a meme from uh, Bruce that's Almighty funny. or whatever. Uh, Donald Trump's video even cut off the part where the audience cheers for it. Why? L let's hear the audience celebrate it. I'm, so, I'm sure I can find it after a little while, but it's like, it's, it's rather frustrating that it's just silly jokes instead of the actual clip, which is terrifying. Is that, would you call that mass formation? They're cheering for the tone of who they perceive to be their leader? <laughs> Probably. Like he cues he says it goes up and then, gah! And that's the cue for the audience to go, ah! Yeah, he can go say nothing and just everyone cheer at him. That's how bad the brainwashing is. Yeah. It's like a cadence with a speech, too. I know what you're saying. Yeah, they're just, they're conditioned to react that way. And whether they even know what they're doing, it's like, because of the way he pauses and because of the way he said this thing and he has his, this gusto at the end of the sentence, everyone thinks, oh, cool, time to clap. But yeah, and it didn't say anything. I do think that the people that are, you know, that go to those things, they kind of, you know, read the, the flow of what he's saying and kind of right. know where this place is you're yeah. supposed to <laughs> and there are enough people that are just like okay this is the spot we'll go ahead and do it where yep. the rest of the people kind of respond yep. as well classic pavlov conditioning you know? yeah you know and i mean i'm not i'm not sure that there's you know that there's a huge amount of people well, that are doing that sure there's not a lot of pressure. people that is that is uh they all cut it off stuff you know it's sure. crazy. Every clip I've found so far, they cut off the audience celebrating Trinidad Shabbat Depression. Did you hear the one guy go, yeah, right after he said it? And that like <laughs> yeah. tease off the audience to start cheering. I wonder if he was a plant or if he was just so into Biden. He's like, God, yes, everything you say. Oh, yeah. God, Lead an effective strategy to mobilize Trinidad Shabbat Depression. He's like, yeah, yeah. Let's do, Play uh, that again. It's ridiculous. Well, I'm trying to find the full clip where the crowd cheers and screams. I gotta for hear it. it. I remember. But talking they're about all this. gone. That's disturbing too. That's super annoying. Truna limanana prisoner. 
It is. It's it's the reaction to insanity that I fear often. The same with COVID. The way that the gov- people reacted to the COVID was way worse. Turned out, I think, objectively, maybe damaging the economy, people's social lives, children's ability to school. Then the COVID ended up being we didn't know if it was going to be super dangerous, but like a 99.6 percent recovery rate. Uh, the, so uh, the, the people's people's reactions are like, I mean, we're animals. We got to remember that humans are like basically recently domesticated animals only 10,000 year you know we were just wild <laughs> domesticated who domesticated us though cats that's, that's a theory that's a cool take yeah yeah i i don't think cats domesticated humans. <laughs> it's just a funny joke that people oh, say so <laughs> saying, I, I thought you actually did think it was cats. there might be some legitimacy to <laughs> I, it i, I would i would honestly i would i would be a little more inclined towards dogs to be flat out honest with you than cats. they're wild though well dogs I guess they're no they're actually wild. domesticated <laughs> <laughs> they are. That, was a good, that was a great loop i came right back to it you're, you're right that was good <laughs> your face is good too like you said. <laughs> we're gonna find this clip it's worth yeah. it it's it's impossible i'll lead an effective this strategy like to mobilize true and international over depression i'll lead an effective nope. strategy wow. to mobilize they're all, all cutting. cutting off the audience celebrating that's like the mass formation psychosis true and over depression i'll lead an effective that, that's it. Like, dude, I searched Twitter, YouTube, the Truna Limit Pressure. When this first came out, one of the biggest talking points about it was why is the audience cheering? And I think that's the most damning thing to show people. And now it's extremely difficult to find any video of like, I suppose if you go to C-SPAN, we got to find the original video and reclip it. So <clears throat> that's what we'll have to do. You hear that, Kellen? Or just, how just about, kidding, Kellen. How about, it's just like for anybody listening who knows where the original source material is, just pull the full clip where you can hear the audience cheer for him. Yeah, tweet yeah. it out at me. But I mean, it is at pretty me, crazy. You know, it's like the, he obviously says nothing. It's clearly gibberish. Yeah, and people are just like, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, you know, the the fact that we were just had John Stewart, and I've mentioned this before. Um, my opinion of how badly he's harmed America. Um, and it's ironic because he was <laughs> accusing Tucker Carlson of, of hurting America when he when he went on Crossfire. Um, but the whole mocking everything conservatives did for, you know, 15 years or whatever has made it toxic to look at a conservative yeah. and take them seriously and, yeah, and take anyway. their ideas seriously. I thought yeah, Colbert was doing similar. Oh, on. You gotta say hi to me. He's so creepy. We go back a long way. She was 12, I was 30. But what? <laughs> what the? This woman helped me get an awful lot done. She's anyway, like, uh, I'm uh, sick and tired of smart guys. I'm sick and tired of ordinary people being fleeced. I'm tired. I can't, I can't do so, the, like the music kills it He was so clear-headed yeah, back yeah. then. Yeah. Dude, the oh, Tara, sure. let's talk about Tara Reid for about five seconds. The girl who had to flee to Russia that claimed he abused her, pushed her up against the wall. and Delaware had the highest cancer rate in the nation. America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. I was in the foot him. Uh, foot <laughs> <laughs> music, music, music. It ruins all of it. You know what we need to do? We need to make like an archive of like, guys, it's just a video. You can hear what he says. We're not going to we're not going to cut the context. We're not going to remove the cheering. We're not going to add stupid music to it. That's the most frustrating thing. Someone it, it, has it, someone what someone tweeted at me. I'm not sure if they actually have the whole one. No, this looks like it's short. It's only 26 seconds. That might be it. Yeah, because the the video. Nah, not that's that, nah, yeah. nah, music, yeah. music. Same one. They're all they're all edited, removing the actual context of what happened. Thanks for trying, Johnny. But I mean, is the cheering in it? Maybe even with the music. Mm. Maybe that's the issue. Basically, if you if you watch any of the raw clips, someone tweeted at me. Oh. <laughs> that's the wrong tab. Yeah, wrong tab. If you if you listen to any one of uh, Biden's rallies where he says nonsense, they cheer for it. Yeah, and I'm like, that's where we're at. How we navigate this? I mean, I got a I got a I got a harsh reality for y'all. It could just be that we're all trapped in a in a simulation surrounded by NPCs, <laughs> and there's only like ten thousand actual sentient human beings. And the rest are Could just be. and like the, the like they're me's just going like you know. I don't understand how a human being could cheer for him, so that, that makes sense. It's like like at least Trump, when you laugh at Trump, he said something. Yeah. yeah. Often, yeah, it's, it's the content of his speech that you're laughing at. Even with Hitler, they were cheering for the things. He, well, no, they were also cheering for the way he was saying it. 
they liked that fire. They were like, we're so yeah. desperate. We'll take this this angry passion. Yeah, I feel like, I mean, granted, like the U.S. is in, in you know, a, a kind of a down spot, but I certainly don't think that we're uh, Weimar Germany. No, not today. No. But the inflation's concerning and the, the crowds are cheering for nonsense is also concerning because what other nonsense will they cheer for? Someone just linked me with a two-hour raw video. Wow. I, bet that, uh, I just reposted it. It's on top of my uh, Twitter feed if you want. The two-hour clip? Well, I mean, where is the... I, I mean, for later, if you want to send it to calendar, I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> put, a, put a comment on that tweet that, uh, with the timestamp, whoever just gave that to Phil, and we'll, we'll play it on the show. Thank you, Potato. Tuning on the shop of the pressure. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to... Uh... What are going to do? <laughs> oh my god here we go ladies and gentlemen you ready for this one this is a story from uh oh god. like a couple days ago but oh boy from the post millennial california democrat sen uh democrat senate candidate wants to raise minimum wage to 50 dollars per what hour the these it are special people no, they're special <laughs> their brains don't work so we have to be nice but um like if you, you if your society allows people who are cognitively deficient to hold office, your country will fail. Yeah. You know, uh, I'll keep it simple for you. Um, if a guy comes to my house to fix my toilet mm -hmm. and he doesn't know anything about fixing toilets, he will likely make the problem worse. It is no different if it is a plumber or a politician. A woman who does not understand how business works clearly will get into office and just make the problem worse. I, I, I invite you to test this theory out and hire an electrician to build you an airplane. Now, hold on. Electricians are smart guys. Okay. They can probably do a lot of electrical stuff, but I don't know that they're going to completely understand how a plane flies. They could probably, based off sight and understanding with, with what they've done, you know, build some kind of rudimentary flying device. It just will not be at the same, to the same standards as like a Cessna or a Cirrus or, you know, a Learjet. You know what I mean? So I'm not saying... She is mentally deficient to an extreme degree. Which I'm saying, probably she is. Perhaps. I'm saying this woman clearly has no idea what she's talking about and will not be able to pilot the ship effectively. The, uh, Let's be respectful. The, the, the CPI numbers, the uh, inflation numbers just came out today or yesterday, and they're still three and change percent. So they're still at least 50% higher than what the government's target is because the target's 2%. Yeah. Um, and these are year over year. So it's, it's, you know, 3% from 3% right. higher from last year, but last year was ridiculously high. I, I want to, so. oh. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a educate you lady. Okay. Democrat Barbara Lee. She says, uh, she noted a recent report that stated in the Bay area, $127,000 for a family of four is just barely enough to get by. Another survey said 104,000 for a family of one, barely enough to get by low income because of the affordability crisis. Just do the math. Of course, we have national minimum wages that we need to raise to a living wage. We're talking about $20, $25, fine, but I've got to be focused on what California needs and what the affordability factor is when we calculate this wage. Let's start. <laughs> okay, so the problem is you can't afford to live in San Francisco and buy food. So we decided to raise the minimum wage to $50 an hour. Now, a guy who works at a grocery store is making 50 bucks an hour. Okay, well, in order to stock and uh, sell the groceries, the employees who work at the grocery store getting paid $50 an hour, we're going to have to sell the goods at that store substantially more to cover the cost of the employees who are working there. Let's break it all the way down to a coffee stand. A little box. All they do is sell a cup of coffee. Costs about 50 cents to make a cup of coffee. Then you got to pay for the cup. Then you got to pay for the lid. Then you got to pay the employee. The employee is getting $50 per hour. Okay. How many cups of coffee are you going to have to sell every hour in order to cover the cost of this employee? If you sell one cup of coffee per hour at your coffee stand, that cup of co coffee will cost $52 because it has to pay, by law, $50 an hour. But let's say your coffee stand sells 10 cups per hour. Okay, okay, fine. That, I suppose. So each cup of coffee probably costs about six, seven bucks at this point for literally just to stand. Ah, but there's electricity, there's regulation. I'd think at 50 bucks an hour, your cup of coffee, if you're selling 10 an hour, you'd have to sell it for about eight or nine dollars for a small cup of coffee. Now we're not talking about cream. Cream and sugar were not included in that equation. Cream spoils. I think we'd be looking at maybe like 12 to 13 bucks for a cup of coffee. And, and if at any point you sold less than 10 an hour, you go to business. Let's do, the, let's do the basic math now expanding moving forward. 
this individual wants to rent an apartment. You need $127,000 a year. You got an apartment cost two grand. So we say, okay, 50 bucks an hour. Now you can afford that apartment, right? You work at a coffee stand. Bang, you're making a lot of money. Uh, okay, well, now we got to get an electrician to fix the lights. Now we got to get a plumber to fix the toilet. We got to pay city taxes. Well, the unfortunate thing is that anybody who does any work for this building is going to have to at least get 50 bucks an hour. So in order to cover those costs, the landlord, the owner of the building is going to have to raise the price of rent for everybody. You see, it's just a special degree of stupid. Also, just so you know, I can't afford to pay for that coffee anymore, so I'm going to stop shopping there. They're, uh, they might not actually be able to sell coffee anymore now that they raise the prices so high, and they might have to close down. And then the employee is going to lose his job. Here's Where else the, is he going to work? Do it again to the next company? So here's, here's the best thing. Uh, I learned this when I was talking to an accountant when New Jersey raised the minimum wage by like a dollar. They were doing it in increments or whatever. And he said, 30% of my clients have, sh have shut down over this. Because there is no such thing as a gradual increase. There is only an immediate increase by the increment they've declared at the time. So what they'll say is, we're going to go from 10 bucks to 12 bucks an hour, but we'll do it slowly over time. Not true. What ends up happening is they say, in six months, it'll go up 50 cents. In six months, another 50 cents until we reach 12. That means for every small business, they have to add 50 cents per hour as soon as that deadline hits which instantly increases their costs. For a lot of these businesses, the overwhelming majority of businesses, businesses in this country, it is just some family or some guy who's making $30,000, $40,000 a year as the owner of his hot dog stand, his pizza shop, or, or whatever it is. You increase his labor costs by 10% overnight, and or I think this would, this would be like 7 or 8%. All you're doing is saying he should make less or shut down. What ended up happening in New Jersey, tons of small businesses just closed overnight. I think that's in purpose. They want Walmart, Amazon, yeah. everything to take over. That's the goal of globalists. Mm -hmm. That's so sad, honestly. Yeah, it'll be like idiocracy, just one big Costco. Mm -hmm. Everybody's wearing Crocs. Yeah. Was that was that was that what they were doing in the <laughs> Yeah, there's a story that goes along with that. They, when they were actually filming, they needed to get everybody in shoes, and the the. Uh, the set designer or the designer said, okay, we've got these. And they were like, right. they're like, what are you doing with these? They're like, no one's ever going to wear them. They look ridiculous. And now everyone's wearing them. Yeah. It's crazy how they took off. I, I noticed uh, a, an image that you took me uh, a little while ago. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're uh, an indoor Crocs fan. As I well. do have, I do have a pair of Crocs <laughs> right. for, uh, for home use, Likewise. but home use only. Likewise. Yes. Same here. Yo, Likewise. this is wild. <clears throat> 50 bucks an hour for a salary job. She's basically saying, all employees, no matter what they do, have to get one hundred and four thousand dollars per year. Yeah, and and then that just means that That's... the one hundred and four thousand dollars is no longer going to have the buying power yeah. that one hundred and four thousand dollars has now. These are such simple, basic economic principles. Yeah. These are as it's as one hundred and one as it gets. Yeah. So, like, if they're going to like, there's arguments to be made about um, UBI, and there are people that want to make that that argument and stuff, and. That's one thing, right? You want to get rid of other programs so that way you can have a UBI so everybody has some kind of basic income. It's fine, but that's still going to affect the inflation rate. It's still going to be inflationary. Anytime you print money into the system without taking money out, it's inflationary. Yeah, it makes so it if they don't good. cut, you're not going to fix any of the problems and any of these things that, that they're doing that are inflationary, they only make our problem worse. 33 thousand billion dollars 33,000 billion so jeez there is a there is a diminishing return on uh in some areas of businesses there is an exponential return depending on the business you're working in for this business for instance there is a diminishing return on revenue the more that we produce for timcast.com the less we actually make so it's really funny sometimes we'll get messages from people and they'll be like I was watching, you know, uh, uh, a members only show and I saw this and I'm upset. So I'm canceling my membership. And I'm like, man, it's actually wild because we have the same amount of members now as we did before we made that thing. And so it's like, if we did not give you the extra thing, you would not have canceled your membership. Right. So at a certain mm -hmm. point, there's an upper limit to the reach we have and the amount of conversions we can actually get. One thing I think we would benefit from that I just don't really want to do is what every other company does, and it's membership retention. So there's a lot of people who stop being members because their card expires and they would love to be members, but they just forgot about it. And that's why companies will hire someone to get on the phone or send an email and be like, hey, is there a reason you, you dropped off? But uh, in terms of this communist psychotic garbage, I will just put it simple. If I was told you work eight hours a day 
you will get paid 50 bucks an hour. You work any more than that, you get nothing. I'd say, okay, well, then I stop working. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. the problem with communism. Because instantly anybody who wants to do the extra mile, which is how societies improve, ceases doing so because it's just stressful for no reason. That's mm -hmm. communism. That, that's mm -hmm. what's happening in Spain. People don't work. People are lazy because they just get paid by the government. So to be fair, you've had siesta for a long time. <laughs> yeah. What? You've had siesta in Spain for a siesta. long time. We, we still have siesta. I know. And you've had it well before the socialists came. <laughs> You have siesta at <laughs> Burning Man, too. I was actually too, working back then. My grandpa was such a hard-working person, but he was actually getting paid for the extra hours. Yeah. Now my dad works the same as my grandpa, same job, same company. He doesn't get paid for the extra hours. The idea from what the left will say is people should do things because they want to do it. And it's like, sure. I mean, if I was told that all the extra work I was doing would do nothing towards my ability to have access, freedom, and and uh, w towards my mission or whatever, I'd probably just hang out, you know, I don't know, play some guitar on the porch, yeah. go skating a lot more. Drink some beer. That's what Spanish people do. Yeah, just, okay, if like, what do I want to do? Okay, well, I, I, I like having two shows, but if one of them is just dead weight, I suppose we can just stick to one of them and not do both and then spend the rest of the day, like, I don't know, going to hang out with my friends. That's mm -hmm. where I'm at too. It's not a good place to be because I want to make more stuff and get compensated. There's got to be a way to like, if if monthly buying a TimCast membership is like 10, eight bucks a month and then you pay 99 cents a month for each show you want access to on the TimCast network, or you can pay five bucks a month for direct access to the show without the $8 a month subscription like creative ways to like and then you could take of those 99 cents a month for that show you could split that off onto the people running that show one of the hardest things is that like inflation hits like at a certain point we have to increase costs of timcast membership and i'm just like i guess you know what do we do we like the, the we, we increase the lowest tier to 11 bucks for all new members is like the only way we could do it it's probably what we have to do and it's because you know, people need to understand when the cost of eggs doubles, the people who work here need to eat eggs. And so that means we have to then pay people more money. That's just normally, that's just how it goes. And so then we're going to get people complaining. And it's like, it's, it's, it's difficult, but uh, that's, that's business stuff. That's fine. I'm just saying the communist stuff where it's like, if you do extra work, you get nothing. It's like, then I won't do it. Like, no, I will just. you? What should you? What's motivating you? I, I hate that state of mind. Oh, sorry to interrupt. Because I, you should want to do more. I mean, w w before, there was a time before money. It was just about acquiring resources. Yeah, but that wasn't. That was about. Uh -oh. That was about saving your life. That was about not yeah. dying. The time before money, like before the division of labor and before money, when everybody was responsible for their own hunting, gathering, and 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 you know maybe the small farms or whatever, it was not easy. It was hard, hard, hard living, and people died in mass. The funny, the, the funny thing about these communists too is that their ideas. We, we, I did this, I did this long segment a couple weeks ago about that Richard Wolf guy, mm -hmm. and also as a correction too about the Christian nationalists. It's a not Richard Wolf. Richard. Yeah, it's William Wolf. Is, there, is uh, one is, of them? Is it Stephen or something? There's a All there's a couple is, of them. But this communist guy was of like wolves out there. If you're getting paid twenty dollars an hour, it's because you're creating more value, because in order to pay you twenty dollars an hour your boss has to at least make that, right? Mm -hmm. The only problem with these communists who are morons is that the people who come here to clean don't actually sell or create any product I can sell. I just have to pay them what they demand if I want things to be clean and the garbage to be taken out. To which the response from the communists was, you can't do a show with a dirty studio. I beg to differ. I'm staring at Ian's desk right here <laughs> yeah. and we doing the show just fine. You see the dust on this thing. <laughs> can you? My point is... Uh, I don't have to pay cleaners to do it. I want to pay cleaners to do it. But by the communist argument, I should fire them. They, they produce no value for the system at all or for themselves. In fact, by the communist argument, they are stealing from me. Yeah. By taking your waste away? Communists say that the workers are entitled to the profits of the, of, of the things they create. Sure. I say, agreed. Then you're also entitled to the debts of, as well. That means if you're a cleaner who comes to my studio and I have to pay you X, that is debt you owe to me. And, and like you're saying, what exactly, do you, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you 
value the the cleanliness of your room you know how do you figure out what the the how does that add to What's surplus the value of the the establishment here i, mean, I don't I, it doesn't you can't we, we could have garbage for, for all anybody watching this knows there could be garbage littered all across the floor we could be sitting in mounds of taco bell wrappers for all they know <laughs> Uh, no, we shout do. out to Asmo Dan if you're out there. <laughs> yeah, love you. <laughs> but uh, you know, we 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 keep things clean because we want them to be clean. But it's just it's laughably absurd. The reality is, low skill, low intelligence people demand you give them free stuff. Yeah, that's that's it. Yeah. I mean, the 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 idea that communism and socialism are the ideology of the the. Uh, the 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 envious and the 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 vengeful and the angry like it's it's absolutely the ideology of the jealous i, I gotta say I, I shout out asmo dan who's a demon from diablo i'm talking about asmon gold you ever watch he's a streamer <laughs> yeah. Zach. he's with your taco bell you know who i'm talking about Zach. asmon gold what's up brother i think that you should maybe be incentivized to get a portion of the profits of a company you're working for if you're creating but not entitled that's no. up to the owner of the company disagree uh you want to make that you want to make that deal then the debts as well. Timcast Events for instance, separate entity is in the red, right? And so one of the things we're going to be doing is shifting our events from traveling around the country because it's it's impossible to the Martinsburg uh, uh Casper location, members only, private and no longer I don't think I think we might have yeah, I don't think we're ever going to do a theater ever again. I don't think we're ever going to do a thousand seats. We sold. We sold out. Yeah. And then we lost 30 grand. Uh, Miami, we just about broke even. That was good. But then the, the the salary work and the contract stuff in between those events drains the accounts. Mm -hmm. We can't make enough money to do it. We and, avoid doing fly-in shows because of that. Because to yeah. go and do one show, fly out, it's we, we can do them, but we have to get paid yep. a big paycheck for us so, to fly out there. So then what happens is my team comes to me and says, we need to charge $200 per, tickets, uh, per ticket for this event. And I'm like, we can't charge that much. Like, there, there's no way. We're doing 100 bucks per ticket. Uh, so I'll let everybody who's watching know. The Martinsburg event on uh, March 5th, tickets were 100 bucks a piece for members only. So you all ready to be a member. And that comes out to, who wants to do the math? 50 times 100. I think I know. <laughs> I gonna, okay, uh, our security 000. costs are substantially higher than that. The ticket sales will do nothing to, to uh, uh, make this event possible. If we wanted to sell tickets to cover the cost of the event, tickets would have to be like 250 bucks each. We could only reasonably fit about 50 Man. people on the top on, in the studio room uh, with folding chairs. And we have to have a certain we have to have a certain number of security for insurance purposes. Security can only work under certain conditions. And so uh, have to have insurance. We literally legally have to um, because of financing. So the banks require insurance. Insurance requires security. All those costs, flat costs, can't do anything about. Mm -hmm. 50 tickets. I think if we sold tickets for like 250, we would be able to break even maybe. So yeah, that's the, the harsh reality of this. And then what happens is understanding businesses degree, it's like, why should we do the event? Well, we tried several times hoping that we could get to a point where we're making more than we're spending. The problem, you'll eventually run into somebody in some capacity who says, I see how much money you made. I deserve more. And then we have to, I have to say something like, okay, yeah, that like we sold, uh, uh, yeah, we sold 50 tickets for a hundred bucks each. That's five grand for one day. You get five grand for one day and I'm only oh. getting paid X. I deserve this. Dude. And then it's like, okay, shut it down. That's yeah. it. The funny thing, uh, I think people need to understand about business ventures is like these communists seem to think at an established business, it's as simple as I sold 10 cheeseburgers today for a hundred dollars or you know 10 cheeseburger meals and got a hundred dollars and they only paid me 40 they're ripping me off yep. and it's just like man i hate communists dude yeah mm -hmm. i can't stand communists yeah it, it, what i like about profit sharing is that it incentivizes the employee to work harder to make more money for the company not necessarily harder but just better um and right. that's a good thing for your employees to want the company to make more money because otherwise mm -hmm. employees don't care uh, debt sharing gotta have debt sharing too though. but it would be like it should be a scalar thing like i'm only i maybe i'll give you 0.1 percent of the profits but I, you know, i'm only going to take 0.01 percent of the losses from you it's the it's the craziest thing when it comes to trying to start a venture someone comes to you and says okay i can do this job for you it costs you know x amount of dollars you say okay then they say okay i did the event for you but i think i deserve more money and then my response is like 
hey, I lost 50 grand doing that event and I don't have any more money to give you. And they're like, well, I think I deserve it anyway. And I'm like, okay, you want me to get my wallet and just hand you the cash out of my wallet? Like people don't seem to understand that. So these communists who are saying things like I deserve 50 bucks an hour, what they're saying is I want the government by threat of violence to go to my boss, point a gun at him and say, give them your money. Mm -hmm. And they're like, because I deserve it. And, and the argument they make is Am Jeff Bezos is too rich. Sure. Jeff Bezos has a lot of money. But 90 plus percent of businesses are small businesses. And when you implement things like this, you're not going after Bezos, who will hire a bunch of lawyers, hide his value and get away with it. You're going after mom and pop shops and then making Walmart stronger. Or hire a bunch mm -hmm. of robots. Amazon hire a bunch. Oh, just, dude. Just fire a bunch the, the, of people our, and our replace Taco them Bell with over robots. Here? Our Taco Bell over here is all kiosks. Like there's a couple people behind the thing working, but you walk in and you order in a kiosk. Yeah. That's the future, man. Because you're like, I don't got to pay the kiosk. And the kiosk doesn't have for, ask for a raise. What is In Spain, is it? Like literally socialist, communist, socialist? What is the system? It's socialist. It's not communist, but it's an undercover communist, basically. It's really, really bad. Like our president right now did just the biggest unconstitutional thing in history. And he's just walking free, happy. What did he do? Huh. You know about, that's a long thing, the independentism of Catalonia. Are you oh, familiar yeah, yeah, yeah. with that? A little bit. So basically, um, to remain in power, he needed an absolute majority. So what he did is that he pardoned the person who said that Catalonia was independent, which was completely unconstitutional. <laughs> so the small party would just work with him and have the majority of Catalonia. Because we have a lot of parties in Spain, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. they have to work together in order to have the majority and be the president. So there was this small party that said, I won't work with you until you pardon every politician that said that Catalonia was independent. Wow. So basically he did that. We're going to go to Super Chats. If you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends, head over to TimCast.com, click join us, become a member, <clears throat> excuse me, to support our work directly and help keep this operation afloat because it's expensive. And uh, it really is. I said this a lot, but, uh, you know, since since I started doing all of this, my pay. So uh, I'll, let me slow down. When I first started this. The Tim Pool Daily Show, my original TimCast channel, and the TimCast News channel, where I just monologue, was my source of income. For the first couple of years, my salary was less than half of what those channels were generating, and the rest of that money was being put into expanding the company, hiring people, working on projects, making books, trying to influence culture. And, uh, you know, and there was also some giving, like donating to, I've donated a couple times to like disabled veterans and things like that, and uh, other causes and individuals fighting the culture war. Uh, recently I gave myself a raise, which puts me just about 80% of what my morning show is. So my personal salary is about 85% of what is generated from the Tim Pool Daily Show. All the money generated from TimCast.com uh, as memberships, the Elite Club, all of that stuff, uh, Cast Brew, there is profit and it does roll over to me, but it's not part of what I pay myself. It is just reinvested back into the projects, the mission and the company and all of that stuff. That is to say, of course, I personally benefit. My net worth goes up. What I'm saying is when you become a member at TimCast.com, what we end up doing is like putting on events at in Martinsburg, which are a loss to us, a loss we can support and handle, which basically means like we just allocate funds from one area to another. But my ultimately, my point is I'm not going to buy a three million dollar mansion in Santa Monica or West Hollywood, whatever. I'm not going to get a, a Porsche Taycan or anything like that. I'm not going to, you know, uh, to be fair, I have a Tesla Model S. Okay, so that's that was a, that was a joke, actually. I was I was making a, a joke about a son. But uh, I don't want to buy an infin infinity pool. I want to, like, uh, fund some journalism. You know, we've got journalists over at SCNR, which uh, SCNR and the journalism from the Timcast News Team does not make any money. It never did. It's about doing things that I think are impactful and important, and it's made possible thanks to you. And so uh, just, just know that, you know, the money that goes into Timcast.com memberships, the point of all of it is we're going to try and build stuff and do cool things. We're going to we're going to put faces on Times Square billboards or whatever. If you're if you're into that, you know, so uh, let's uh, let's read your super chats. Become a member. The members only uncensored shows coming up at 10. And we're going to talk about uh, what happened with that uh, drag uh, show with kids where an individual was attacked by the congregation. But let's uh, let's read super chats for now. Kilted Carnivore says Joe Biden has been looking rough since he used force lightning on corn pop. Mm. I think actually it wasn't corn pop. It was, um, it was, it was, it was, it had to be more recent because Marco Rubio. 
I don't know about Rubio. You just called out a random guy. I don't know. No, you got to call out somebody who's like disappeared from the limelight. George like Santos? Someone who disappeared <laughs> and is no longer in oh, Congress and is retired or whatever. You know, so Joe Biden has really declined over the past year or so. Like, <sighs> you know, in 2020, he's talking like this, you know, Donald Trump, blah, blah. No, he's talking like this. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, it's true. It is. He's, he's like, very true. yo, he's hanging on by a thread. Crazy, man. <laughs> Let's go. What do we have here? Mr. Uh, Mr. Betalon says, Tim, apparently this is a three-week-old story, but they tested and successfully implanted a microchip to curb addiction. Closer to read-write thoughts. Let's go, baby. Oh. Did you guys see Zuckerberg's anti-Apple yeah. part of it? Thing? Yeah. I didn't see the whole thing. I saw the, I saw the start of it. Apparently, it, it's, it's, it looks like it gives the Apple a run for its money or it's better. Uh, it's an but, eighth of I mean, the cost. Yeah, it's a lot less money. But, but again, in fact, the Apple one has a higher resolution, and that that's what matters. Yeah, and and also Apple doesn't innovate. They take things that already exist and they make them really, 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 really. They work, make them work really, really well. The iPhone was not a brand new thing when it came out. The iPhone was, you know, the smartphone had been out and touch screens had been out. The iPhone, when Apple released the iPhone, it was just that it worked better than anything. Previously. Well, it was simplified. Yeah. A single yeah. button, mm -hmm. touch, no stylus. Yep. Push uh, the I'm on Team that. Zuck, though. Uh, not Team Cook. I'm on Team Zuckerberg on this one. Uh, Oculus is better. Open systems are better. It's, I believe it's Android based. Okay. Uh, I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure it is. And Apple is proprietary and closed system. One of the points that Zuckerberg made is that when it came to smartphones, the closed system won out. And he said, I'm hoping that like with, with computers, the open system succeeded. What, what this means for those that don't know, on uh, an open system, you can make an app, upload it, share it however you want. On a closed system, it's got to go through their proprietary system. So Apple is closed. If you want an app on Apple, it's got to go to them and they decide. The benefits... Well, malware malware is uh, is fewer and far between. Still exists. Malware basically is dependent upon market share, so people find a way. But uh, with an open system, you do have risks of bad apps. You could download a program that's like not really what it says it's going to do, and it puts spyware on your device or whatever. You're going to need to be a bit more vigilant. But it means that if you want to make an app, you can make one and just put it on the system. So I like I like open. I like Android better. I don't like Apple. Uh, however, we did order our uh, uh, face sucker VR mind melter. And it will be here, and we'll give it a shot. That's the Apple Vision Pro? Yeah. Ooh, that's going to be intense. Yeah. Well, yep. Market research. They're available? I thought they were still- Yeah, yeah for sale. Just yeah. $4,000. <laughs> I would. I thought they were. I thought, you had, I thought there was a, a waiting list. We got the- We have a couple Oculuses. It's fun. Uh, I was playing Skyrim on it like a while ago. Apparently, you can make videos with those things, too, like that'll record your the yeah. way you look, and then you can like be in a room with your friend and like, oh, do yeah, a live stream. So... Yeah, but it makes a CGI avatar of you. Mm -hmm. It's like creepy. You. Yeah. yeah. But there's, uh, there's the one glasses, I think, for $300, Ray Ban, that has like the camera here. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Ray Ban. Everywhere. Right? everywhere. Yeah. I think we have a pair of those. Basically, yeah. like That's when cool. new tech comes out, we buy it and try it and see what's going on. We should, should bring, do We should bring do it up here, put it on the show. table, one of those VRs I've just got for like, reference. I've got like three pairs of Google Glass in a box somewhere. Yeah. Those would be cool <laughs> to have like sitting out so we can all like, what, what is that? It was funny. It was like, it was really hard to get the first one, but after the first one broke, they instantly just gave me a free second one <laughs> and then when that one broke they gave me another one they really liked what i was doing with it we got a big store that if you google search tim pool google glass Inst istanbul you see like this goofy picture of me wearing them with a wire coming out man i remember talking about in 2007 the future is going to be contacts with augmented reality and then they mm -hmm. built it they were listening at google while i was talking about it. i make internet youtube videos and they'd listen and then they'd they made it, but they made these goofy ass glasses where it was like, no contact lenses. Have, you don't want people to know you have it on. That's they, the point. They do have contacts, which I think can measure like uh, blood sugar levels or something like that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's a very simple like chip in the contacts or whatever. And based on your tears or something, I don't know. I could be wrong. Oh. Something like that. All right, let's go. What do we got? Jacob Parody says Narbar's candles on public square is being commandeered by my 17 year old future niece. I'm so proud of this young prodigy. Cinnamon vanilla is one of the favorite. I, 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 I watched a video on how to make cinnamon. Did what? you, do you guys know where cinnamon comes from? Trees. Where? The bark of trees? The bark of trees. It's, it's the inner layer. It's like the top layer with the bark shaved off. What, oh, what wow. tree? Cinnamon tree. Wow. I watched a video and I was like, 
because we have we had we have whole cinnamon and it's just like rolls and i'm like <laughs> what part of the plant is this and so i'm like i've never looked i've never cared i don't know and then i watched a video where a guy's hacking at a tree and then he peels the first layer of the tree off he, he shaves off the bark peels the first layer and then he eats it wow so he like good. just bites it he's like mm, tastes great i'm like wow very beneficial for your health yeah. We also have a ton of black walnut out here, and you can actually get syrup from black walnut trees. Oh, those are good for um, parasite cleanses, black yeah. walnut. And they're everywhere, and they're huge. And so we actually are looking into tapping the black walnut, and they say that the black walnut syrup tastes like butterscotch. Mm. Yeah, good fun. <laughs> All right. Raymond G. Stanley Jr. says, Tim, Luke Milkers has a member area, is now taking <laughs> callers, and even stole Moonlord for a couple weeks. Any comment for SCNR to his copying of you? <laughs> well, you know. Uh, imitation is the finest form of flattery. Is that what they say? He, did did he say Luke Milkers? That's what yeah. he said. Dot com. Let's find out if that's still live. <laughs> is that is that what it is? <laughs> yes, so many. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but you definitely want to check out the best political show. Milkers? Yeah, LukeMilkers.com right. will take you to wearechange.org. Praise Thy Jeebus says, Hi, Tim. I love listening to IRL and The Daily Show while making deliveries the next day. Thank you. Well, no problem. Um, you know, it's a, it's a tough job complaining on the internet, but someone has to do it. Happy Thursday to you. Yeah. Happy Thursday. <laughs> uh, you hear this tomorrow. Uh -huh. Thursday's my favorite day because the, the news is all built up and there's just like an, abs a, an absurd amount of commentary. Monday is always just like, oh boy, here we go. But you had runoff from the weekends. Wednesday is usually like that day where it's like, ugh. You got big press releases yesterday. We already talked about it. Now it's Wednesday. It's a little dry. Thursday, you've got, you know, things have picked up here and there. And that's why I basically, the way I do the Friday morning show is I'll record Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then put those all out on Friday. And they're usually like cultural or whatever. Because Friday is, Friday night could be the biggest news day of the week, or it could just be the most boring because nobody wants to work. Let's grab some more. What do we got? CJ Hansen says, the only thing I would say about Russian space nukes is they have maps and DC is clearly marked. I just, when they're like screaming Russian space nukes, I'm like, okay, dude, I, I do not fear Russia. You know, it does, it does break my heart. You guys see that Tucker Carlson video of the subway? Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, but here's, here, here's, here's what I think. If you choose the most beautiful subway in Moscow and then compare it to your average subway in New York, come on, Moscow's gonna look, gonna look better. Mm -hmm. If you go to like uh, one World Trade Plaza or whatever I think the address is, and there's that, the Oculus, I think they call it. It is clean and beautiful, but I hate it. It is brutalist and sterile. And Moscow is beautiful paintings and money. chandeliers. Yeah, it's yeah. art. You're working yep. through art. Yep. Wow, I'm looking at the but Oculus also, now. Yeah, you're looking at it. It's just like a it's big white sterile. It's beautiful. It's like a museum. Oh, the Oculus? No. no. No, the Oculus in New York no, is it, boring. In, in a school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the coolest thing is uh, when I was in Ukraine, the subways are super deep underground. Really? Yeah, because they're, they're afraid of nukes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when they were building it all, it's like, you go way down. Okay. Crazy. Oh, wow. Yeah, man. I, I you know, par I, I'm i bummed about what happened with Ukraine because Kiev's awesome. And uh, I, always want, we, I was actually planning a trip to check out Chernobyl at some point. Now I'll never oh, wow. say. Wow. I'll never set foot in that country. Did Kiev just get hit by a, not just, but get hit by a supersonic missile today? When? I, I, I was reading reports that Kiev got hit by a missile. And they're Maybe. Like, How did that happen? But they go, could have been fake. Fake news. Tina Barnard says, I got to see the Berlin Wall come down. I was there August 1990. I was wow. 16. And a lot of the wall was still standing along with Checkpoint Charlie. I have a couple large pieces I brought back. Wow. Nice. That's amazing. I was uh, I got to go and see the the uh, the statue of Lenin in Kiev that was toppled over. It's kind of amazing because like when these protests were happening and they were trying to get rid of Yanukovych, they threw cables over the statue of Lenin. They ripped it down and started smashing it with a sledgehammer. <laughs> Someone took the head and tried selling it, and they got in trouble. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, I'd love to have a hand. <laughs> I'd love to own that. Someone had the hand. You can probably find it by someone. I think Kiev did not get hit by a missile. I don't know why. Yeah, whatever happened to us buying that statue of Lenin and then giving it to like a shooting range? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the statue of Lenin in uh, Seattle? In Seattle, yeah. I, I don't know. I think we kind of just fell, <laughs> fell off on that one. I think I think we have to do it. Yeah, we have to do it. Dude. Yeah, please do. That's hilarious. All right, I need to, I need to, I, I, I need, I need someone at this company who's like, I can go to them and say, 
find out how we buy and transport that statue of Lenin. And then we need to find someone maybe in like Kentucky who's got like a shooting range. And we would mm. like, we would like to gift this to you. So <laughs> you, can, you can use it for uh, safe, safe, safe videos. You know, it's like the weirdest Mr. Beast episode ever. <laughs> <laughs> we spent $300,000 yeah. on the statue of Lenin and we're going to shoot at it. <laughs> so ridiculous. Dude. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So I guess it was in Fremont. Yeah. Right. And it was like, they were some, they, it was, it was for sale for like 300 grand or whatever, but then to, nobody bought it. I'm trying to see if I can find Salem, Ute, Seattle. Mm. Cause I, I kind of feel like if, you know, I said something like your Tim Kest membership contributes to things like we are going to buy the statue of Lenin to destroy and deface. <laughs> yep. People would be like, I will sign up for that. <laughs> it's like, we can't, we can't provide you with much. The $10 is not going to get you a free cup of coffee. Uh, you can buy Casper coffee. It won't get you a cheeseburger. It won't fix your car, but it will allow us to buy the statue of Lenin for which we can deface and desecrate. <laughs> no, no. The idea we had was to lay it on its side and then let the roosters roost above it. So they're crapping all over it. That's a good That's idea. So funny. I kind of want to do that. Yeah. I think we have to do you that. You have to. Keeping it intact would be a good move if we can. Because I okay. think in like 10,000 years, people will be like, whoa. I think we have to do that. The only problem is I think that <clears throat> if we tell the owners that's our intent, they might be like mm, $3 million. You know mm. what I mean? Like yeah. this guy's going to yeah. pay. I was, I saw like a World War II documentary and after they took Berlin, they were, there was like a big thing of Hitler, like a picture of Hitler and they were shooting at it, just blowing it apart. <laughs> and I got kind of sad because I was like, man, I would love to have that thing. I, I think, yeah, I don't like the desecrate. I, I don't like um, <clears throat> destruction of history, but I don't consider the Fremont statue to be particularly historically relevant. Not in the United States, no. No, no. Like, you know, so there's a, in the Moral Foundations test, Jonathan Haidt's research, one of the questions they ask you is, a, a, like a, a woman is cleaning up and she finds an old American flag to use as a rag to clean the floors. Are you like, how do you feel about this? And you can choose like, it's not okay. It's not that, it's like really not okay. It's it's not okay. It's fine. It's it's okay. It's It's totally fine. Who cares? And like, if I saw someone take an, like, like a real American flag from like something historical and they tried to use it as a rag, I very, very well may use physical force against this individual to prevent that from happening. I was like, going to say that. It just burns inside me just to imagine the fact that someone yeah. is using the flag to, to clean. Or so just respect. If somebody owns their own flag they bought from a store and they want to burn it, I got no beef. If someone tries to destroy an actual American flag that is like, was used in a battle, was flown at a fort, I don't care if it was like, they put it up at a, you know, uh, you know, insert military base for one day before taking it down and replacing it, that is an American flag and should not be desecrated and should not be besmirched, stolen or destroyed. But if you buy your own like nylon flag from the store, I don't care what you do with it, you know. But that's one of the moral foundations about... Um, I think that has to do with sanctity or something like that. Like, I don't know, purity. Mm -hmm. uh, purity is one of them. I don't think it's, I don't think it's sanctity. I think it's purity. I think there's an, uh, I don't, it's, it's, it's something about like, do you care about like where you come from and things? And I think if you don't have that, if you are like, I don't care about the flag, who cares? What happens is that mindset destroys a society because you don't preserve the things that allowed you to succeed in the first place. Exactly. But let's read some more super chats. I really want to buy that Lenin statue. Yeah, man. <laughs> I can't. I'm, I can't find a thing that says that it's still for sale. All the stuff that I can find is from 2015, 2016, uh, and then is this? This is 2017. Is it still for sale? I'd like to, because we're building new Chicken City. Well, so Chicken City right now is is new Chicken City. What's the, that? It's the it's the we have like 30 chickens outside and they have their uh, own city. It's on oh, live stream. So nice. Yeah. So the first one housed seven chickens and then eight chickens and it was destroyed. And that was Chicken City. And then we built new Chicken City, which is the current iteration. The next thing we're going to be building is Neo Chicken City. And I want it to be like Tokyo Cyberpunk. Are you going to put up all kinds of like neon, <laughs> yeah, neon lights? lights. Mm. And I'd love to get little sunglasses for some of the chickens. <laughs> some razor style, like yeah. Yeah, the 80s style. Yeah. And like, you know, cyberpunk, Tokyo cyberpunk, <laughs> Neo Chicken City. Uh, but it would be cool if we could get the statue of Lenin and put the root, like the roosting bar across so the chickens, when they go to sleep, oh, that'd be great. <clears throat> chickens sleep on things. They like to go up high, but they they just poop. Yep. It just happens. Oh, and it 
would be just yeah just all over lennon's face just I love and on that. camera like we uh, imagine that the chicken city camera pointed right at a, a lennon's three hundred thousand dollar face with chicken crap <laughs> flopping on it dude i kind of feel like we would get far leftists who would attack us over something yeah. like that yeah. like well, desecrating yeah. a religious figure to them yeah <laughs> Oh, do people actually still worship that guy? Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah. Really? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I, I, communism is a, is an ideology. It's like that's a the problem because real communism hasn't been tried. I, I'm what? Just, I'm just, <laughs> let's just go to the next super chat. I'm joking. <laughs> All right, Nick Sherman <laughs> says. I was had a heart attack. <laughs> no, it's not real right. communism. <laughs> Phil should make a new song called Two Weeks." To slow the spread and just do nothing but expose all the BS that was happening in the day uh, in nowadays in the lyrics. All the guitars are out of tune. We're not we're not playing in time. Everybody has a different metronome in their ear. So just They're all like remoting in. Yeah, Don't just sounds like a train wreck. The latency everywhere. Yeah, all over Zoom. Yeah. Paul Ref Renfer says, "Come on, Tim. Everyone knows the suspect. The suspect handcuffed in the police car was clearly the Acorn version of Magneto. <laughs> yes, Acorno." And he could control acorns. <laughs> Man. Acorno. Good one. In Good. what in what reality? Uh, could you imagine the sound of an acorn hitting a car? Uh, you can hear oh. it in the video. It sounds like a little metallic ding. ding. But he I was mean, right next to it. Maybe it resonated. I don't know. I think the guy is like either he's m cognitively malfunctioning <laughs> or he was intentionally trying to kill that guy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know about that. Go on. I, mean, I the swear, windows are bulletproof in those cars anyway. I tell you, no, they're not. And no, but I tell not. you what, there's a whole, that was a whole lot of bullets shot at the car to not be trying to kill him. Now, this is a fair point. Alexander uh, Scarpacci says, I think the cop had a psych uh, had a psychotic episode. That's why he wasn't charged. Mental health issue. Mm. Fair point. Hmm. Yeah, point. I think that's that's fair. Yeah, he broke down. Yeah. Yep. And then when he was like, "I'm good, but I feel weird," <laughs> he thought yeah. he was shot. Yeah. You, you know what? You, it was funny because I was thinking exactly that when you were like, he must have rolled over a stone. <clears throat> I'm like, what if he just rolled over his flashlight? Yeah. He rolled on the ground, his fla <laughs> flashlight pressed into his side, and he's like, oh, it hurts. Could have been broken glass. You know, who knows? What do we got? Ryan Hunter says, to add to your conspiracy theory, I think those ridiculous roles were an attempt to destroy the badge cam. Interesting. Hmm, yeah, like, why did true. he do two combat roles? Right. Oh, maybe. That made no I sense. Just, it's no. I mean, you're faster on your feet. Right. There's, There's, why would he roll on the ground twice? Something really shady about that. Yep. Yeah. That whole like like the calling out shots fired thing for me is like he didn't even reach for the for his uh his you don't hear the you don't hear the calm go off and he didn't do anything like that. I don't know, man. It's fishy. It's really fishy. Woody says, I really need an answer to this. Tim, where is it stated that the president has the declassification power you say? I have a clearance in training and others who work with classified Classified, say the president goes through the same process to declassify. What's the process to declassify? What authority is above the president in negotiating and determining what information should or should not be made available to people outside of uh, the U.S. intelligence or security apparatus? If the president of the United States was negotiating with Vladimir Putin on a peace treaty and the president, uh, let's, let's go back in time. Let's say uh, Ronald Reagan is negotiating with who is who, who is the premier at the time or whatever the president Gorbachev, Gorbachev. Gorbachev. and Gorbachev says uh, uh, we are going to put nukes in Cuba and he's like you better not do that and he's like okay well we don't do that if you don't put them in Turkey and he goes I can't tell you if we have any in Turkey what, what do you mean you can't tell me do you or don't you and he's like I can't tell you it's, it's classified okay we are literally negotiating right now to take our nukes out of Cuba if you're willing to tell us where you've got your nukes and you remove them as well I can't tell you Got to get it approved by some committee. That makes literally no sense. The president of the United States would need to go to an, for a foreign leader and say, we will end this war tonight if you pull your troops out of this region. Imagine Donald Trump goes to Vladimir Putin. He's elected. It's 2025. And he says, Putin, get your troops out of the, the, the you know eastern Ukraine. We're going to end this war. And Putin goes, fine. But I want you to remove your resources and intelligence from, from Ukraine as well. And Trump goes, we don't have any there. I don't know. <laughs> and he's like, we know you do. I, I can't say. Are you going to negotiate with me on the, uh, on the start? Don't know. It's classified. Ridiculous. That makes no sense. And even if he was like, I want to tell you, but I can't. <laughs> right, the, right. The, the weakest, <laughs> the most piss poor diplomacy you could the have case, for a why are, why are they talking to him? Right? So it, yeah. ost ostensibly, the person that you're doing the negotiations with would be like, if you can't negotiate, if you don't have the authority... Then you're a joke. Why am I talking to you? Well, well hold on. Someone else. Joke, we yeah. can negotiate, but I'll take it to a committee yeah. of unelected bureaucrats 
who work in intelligence who can make the determination as to whether or not we can let you know <laughs> if we're going to do anything you say. It's a joke. It's so Got crazy. Yeah, the president is the is is the executive so branch. He is the commander in chief. That that's that that's the issue with the immunity as well. He is the chief enforcer of federal law. He is the executive. Yep. So mm -hmm. the reason why we say he has to be impeached first is because we don't want the weaponization of law against the person who's supposed to be enforcing it. And it is a challenge because, you know, my argument against the libertarians is that a hierarchical law, law enforcement system effectively gives you a system of, uh, of appeals in law enforcement. If a court gives you a bad decision, you can appeal to a higher court. They can choose to accept or not accept your, your, uh, your argument and then maybe advance your claim. And then it can advance to the Supreme Court where it ends in, in terms of law enforcement. You call the cops. They don't give you the results you want. You can appeal to a higher uh, uh, law enforcement department and they may or may not assist you. It also prevents, you know, interstate city and county conflict. It's not perfect. I think it's a lot of corruption problems, but, you know. But yeah, uh, it, the funny thing is where it's the question is where it's stated the president has declassification powers. There are far better informed individuals than I. I would uh, uh, suggest Will Chamberlain, who is a lawyer and actually did a, a lot of writing and, and, and uh, about this. But uh, short of going back to the reporting that we did on a long time ago, I don't have any of those sources pulled up for you other than the sheer absurdity it would be of the president of the United States being unable to negotiate with NATO, with China, literally anybody. Could you imagine Trump goes to NATO and he's like, all right, so we've got a big uh, thing we're doing and I can't tell you, but it involves missiles. Uh, sir, yes, Germany. Where are you putting the missiles? Can't tell you. It's classified. You make exactly his voice. Well, that one was not a very good one. I was taking it a little easy. <laughs> but uh, we'll grab a, we'll grab another one. Lance DeBoer says, Tim, I'm a veteran of 10 years of fast food style service relating to WA minimum wage increase. Small business over a grand, uh, over a grand every time the menu went up prices for sign purposes on the menu. I now work in construction making way more and I feel justified in my hourly rate. It's so a lot of things people don't need to uh, don't consider when they say we're increasing minimum wage by 50 cents. You say, OK, how much? So, so that's, you know, a, a what? Five percent increase in all wages for those if you're making 10 bucks an hour. So we're going to have to increase prices comparable to the increase in wages to cover that cost. Got to change the menu. Now, these days, it's all digital. It's a lot easier to change a menu because they're just TV screens. And Oh, or you got to scan. By the way, I think that's unethical when they make you scan a barcode when you go to a restaurant because there could be malware. There, I, I don't yep. think I, we need to legislate that you yep. cannot. You need paper menus. Maybe you can have it as an option if people want to scan it. Well, my friends, if you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends and head over to TimCast.com. Click join us. The members only show will be coming up and it is not family friendly. There are some disturbing images. Uh, an individual who is actually a member of Timcast had gone to a drag show that was allowing minors and was filming and got attacked by the people uh, there. I believe it was at a church. So we'll talk about that. And uh, uh, you can follow the show at Timcast IRL. You can follow me personally at Timcast. Anna, do you want to shout anything out? Sure. You can follow me on X and Instagram with my name, ADA underscore LLUCH. Adayuk. And thank you so much for having me. Right on. I am Phil That Remains on Twix. I'm Phil That Remains Official on Instagram. The band is all that remains. You can follow us on Apple Music, Spotify, Pandora, Amazon Music, YouTube, you know, the internet. And don't forget, the left lane is for crying. I want to first follow me on the internet at Ian Cross, and it's great. I'm going to be going live later tonight, too, around midnight or something. So check my YouTube channel for that. And uh, check out TakeTheChillPill.com. That's... We are Change's supplement line. Take the chill If you're looking for supplements, highly recommend it. And it's a cool name. Take the chill See you later. Uh, thanks, y'all, for tuning in. I am Surge.com. Follow me on the internet on Twix. Uh, I like to argue. Let's do it. We will see you all over <laughs> at TimCast.com in about a minute. Thanks for hanging out.